Just because they weren't actually charged with insurrection doesn't mean they weren't guilty of insurrection. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't mean they were either. And I have the evidence. He's not claiming that means they were. He's just claiming that it does. You brought it up as something that as, as like evidence that they're not, and now you're admitting that it's it's not evidence that they weren't involved in insurrection. And Trump was acquitted for inciting insurrection. So the evidence is on my I, side. I also just don't think. I think he's misunderstanding that Supreme Court ruling. If I'm if I'm thinking about the same Supreme Court ruling that had to do with the Fourteenth Amendment, I don't. That's just not what that said. Well, states have the power to disqualify state officials under Section Three. They lack the authority to enforce Section Three against federal office holders and candidates. They obviously showed up to protest the uh, certification of the vote. They were called there by Donald Trump. If it's a non sequitur, then you in 2021 were using a non sequitur when you made the argument that from the appearance of this, it could not have been an insurrection. Or maybe he just changed his mind. 2021 or... destiny was incorrect because 2021 destiny didn't have the historical context to understand an insurrection. If you want to bring him on here and talk to him, you can, but I don't I agree with everything him. that I said. Not here. Not you. I am 2024 destiny. I've learned more things. I've done more studying. I've read more papers and I've done more research on this. A lot of the BLM protests, first of all, a lot of the a lot of the BLM riots were protests that like opportunistic people turned into riots because they wanted to loot shit. They weren't like pre-planned, like we are going to go here and riot and burn down these buildings because we want to do so and so. They were more like, we're going to go here and protest. And then a lot of times uh, they broke curfew and then opportunistic people said, hey, there's a big, there's a lot of crazy shit going on here with this big protest. We're going to start firebombing Walmart so we can steal all the sweet new PS5s. I can show you in Seattle, I can show you a riot. I can give you a video of cities burning, uh, people screaming and throwing shit, of, you know, property being destroyed or damaged. And then you would go, wow, that kind of looks like a riot. And I would go, yeah, it kind of does. However, nobody was actually charged with the crime of writing. So if you change your mind on that, probably wouldn't affect your opinion at all. I'm going to use your own logic back to you. Just because they weren't charged with an insurrection doesn't mean it wasn't oh an insurrection. Oh my gosh, why, how are we still on this? Um, when people were rioting on January 6th, the goal of that was to stop the execution of the Electoral Compact. It was to stop the purpose of the government, the execution of functional government to do the peaceful transfer of power. They weren't simply engaged in violence and breaking the law, they were resisting the carrying out of the law, the Electoral, uh, the electoral Compact, the ECA. It's not remotely comparable to protesters breaking into the Capitol to try to stop the certification of the vote. These are very, these are clearly different things. Thank you to the entire Fresh and Fit audience for coming out and to DGG as well. We're here today to debate if the events of the January 6th Capitol riots were an insurrection or if they weren't. Simple. It's a simple debate prompt. They either were or they weren't. Looking into the idea of insurrection itself, it isn't exactly clear what the meaning of it is. It does always seem to be tied together with violence or some will to overthrow a government law, government system, government itself, or resistance to that law, or something akin to this. The Supreme Court hasn't given us any guidance on this as they wash their hands of it, and to date, not a single person has been charged or convicted of insurrection who participated in any of the J6 rioting. This includes Donald Trump himself, who was acquitted of inciting insurrection. You would think with no clear guidance. I did they acquit him of inciting insurrection? I don't think they acquitted him of, a, of inciting insurrection. They just refused to rule on whether or not he had committed insurrection, right? Or did they? I'm pretty sure they did not acquit him of doing so. Um, they just said that states don't have the right to kick him off the ballot because the 13th Amendment, or sorry, the fourth, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment is self-executing for states for state positions, but somehow not self-executing for states for federal positions, which doesn't really make sense. Apparently, states get to decide abortion rights, but states don't get to decide who's on a ballot, even though states decide who's on a ballot with every other qualification. They decide how many signatures you, you need. They decide everything else. It's just they can't they can't enforce this one aspect of the Constitution. And Anyway, so what an insurrection anyway, is, rant a rant lack on. of anybody being prosecuted the 14th Amendment, sure. or uh, this supposed insurrection who participated and a president acquitted of inciting one, that that would be that. The events of January 6th were a protest that turned into a riot. This is nothing new. Democrats do it all the time. In fact, Destiny in 2021 completely agreed with my current assessment. Please, if you don't mind, play clip one. Okay, we will uh, make that available to you. Oh, Bill's going to roll. This is the fucking court proceeding. Your Honor, please play we'll clip play now. And I will go ahead and give you an extra five seconds just uh, on your thing. Just oh, is he going to play the clip? Is this the? Uh, is it going to be about BLM or is it going to be when Destiny said January 6th wasn't an insurrection because he because we didn't have as much information okay, back go then? Ahead, uh, play the video, please. Bills. Do you think the majority of the people there were, were actually trying to do that and all they managed to do was like kill like one woman got shot by the cops? You're fucking delusional. I think most of the people probably showed up to protest because they were fucking mad and then shit got riled up. They were probably almost for sure, I would say, some genuine bad actors there that had fantasies yeah. of invading the fucking capital and shit. Now, I think I heard from the FBI that it was like 5% or less had some plan to do something. Even that number sounds a little bit high because 5% of however many thousand people a lot of people but i don't think every single person who went there their goal was to destroy the white house or destroy the capitol building and take it over but because if they were we would have saw way more shit okay now just so you know i have no visual on my end when those play and i'd appreciate it if you guys could put the visual up on my end as well okay. in fact destiny even agrees such writing political violence is part of the democratic process akin to voting he says he said this to justify the george floyd or blm riots that such riots were just one side of the democrat coin and baked in to our democrat process the tails in and just the other half of democracy he says of course he later denied this please play clip two Okay, and we'll uh, get this so that you can uh, see, see it. Just one second, I'm going to stop the clock while we 
We're, we're right now. We're two minutes and forty-two seconds. Oh, hold on, Bills. I like how he opened one. by saying, um, "We're here to debate whether J six is an insurrection, plain or simple." And he hasn't provided a, the definition of insurrection. He all he said is that people like weren't charged for it, and um, and he's like played clips of Destiny looking hi hypocritical. He's already gone like completely away from the main topic of the debate. Once we back off, once to be fair here, once the clip is up, can you see it, Andrew? I cannot see the clip now on my end. He's gonna make it visible to you here in a second. Great. Holy shit! How the are they just, just incompetent, so dude? Dude, and Destiny's fucking reactive Fuji tech thing isn't working either. How are they this bad at their job? Bear with us, guys. We're using a million different what things. What the fuck is this layout, dude? Most of this stuff. Shout out to Bill's in the back working hard. What? Can you see now? I can see. How do you even do this? Something. There we go. Okay. Oh, oh so we will there they go. Roll the clip. Now I'm going to start the clock back up. Bill's, go ahead. Can't be genuine sack of shit. Because, as I debated you in the past, you started talking before January 6th ever occurred about how the BLM riots were justified. It was just the other side of the coin of voting. Of course, don't you realize that crypto didn't do as well for you when you were debating the right now shit? You completely 180 your position. Did I, ever, hold on. did I ever say writing is the other side of the coin of voting? Probably did. That's a really strange thing I did. I did. That's a really strange thing I did. Go ahead. Okay. Right, Activism and riots are one side of the coin, and the other side is voting. You know, it's conspiratorial at all. I think that affecting political change like this is fine. Like that's part of the goal. Like, like activism and riots are one side of the coin, and the other side is voting. Okay. Uh, woo. So, so this is twenty seconds, and go ahead. So, why the radical change of heart on this topic from Destiny? This complete one eighty. Well, that's simple. He hates Donald Trump. A simple motivation, but at least understandable. Trump, right, he also hates Trump supporters. In order for him to justify that he wants them all to be unalived, he needs to brand them all as traitors and insurrectionists. Never In this he way, said, he can build way. a case that Trump supporters are evil, and so it is justified to use violence against them. To recap that, Trump supporters are evil, therefore anything which happens to them is fine. Going so far as to say his friend Pisco, the only, to his friend Pisco, the only reason he wouldn't have liked Trump to have been uh, unalived um, by this would-be assassin is because it would motivate Republicans. This, of course, gives us an entailment that if it wouldn't motivate Trump supporters, he would be fine with Trump having met his demise in this assassination attempt. And this is the last clip. Play clip three, please, and then I'll wrap this up. Okay, we're four minutes and 20 seconds in. I'm going to stop and watch while we pull this up. Proxy 4, 24 seconds, but I'm adding another five from the first clip and how we were pulling up, so. So oh, far beyond that. So Okay. I'll start the clock back up once we roll the clip. Can you see it, guys? Can you see it, Andrew? Oh, sorry, he's, he's screen sharing right now. Give us one second. We'll pull it up. Thank you, audience, and thank you, thank you guys for bearing with us here. Many things going on. We want to make sure Andrew can see it as well as audience. Yeah, I can see it. You can see it. Okay, uh, Bills, uh, go ahead. I'll start the title back up. Oh, far beyond that. So far, giving a fuck. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think he said Thanks Jewish. I think he said, I don't know. And you don't have to answer it, Yeah. Do you wish the attempt had been successful? <sighs> Do I wish that the attempt had been successful? Uh, am I even allowed to say anything about that? You don't have to answer that. Here's what, here's what I'll say. Here, this is what I will say. I don't know, I'm trying to Here's what I will say. A failed attempt is probably the worst outcome of anything that could have happened. I'll say that much. I disagree. I think a successful attempt, a success, if that had happened. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, hold on. We might agree. The successful attempt, or, 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 would be an attempt. The successful, yeah. quick. So, guys, we just hit the, pretty much the five minute mark. Destiny, if you're okay with it, I can let this kind of go on another minute or so, and I'll afford you oh, actually yeah. give you six. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can let us think. Okay, all right. So, we'll complete this out. I'll time it. Whatever I gave Andrew, I will give to you as well on your opening statement. Good. Go ahead. Thank you, Destiny. Whatever. Might be the worst thing happened. But if it was the worst thing, it was because of the country's reaction afterwards, basically. Which is possible, yeah. So, ultimately, Destiny needs to be able to provide us with what an insurrection actually is. An actual working legal definition or even a personal one so we can work off of that to understand the mindset of a person who claims this was oh, an insurrection man, even as nobody ultimately is prosecuted for an insurrection. He, to date, hasn't done this for the same reason the Supreme Court and higher courts won't. If they do define it strictly and categorize it strictly, then it's likely Democrats and even Republicans are engaging in them all the time. Non-stop, in fact. I am, in fact, willing to, in the ultimate spirit of good faith, concede that if Destiny just can't really define an insurrection or tell us what goes into that category and not into the category of a riot, that he really has no business calling anybody an insurrectionist, especially when nobody's been charged with an insurrection in regards to J6. Nobody, and certainly not convicted. I will concede, however, he concedes Democrats are likely involved in insurrections all the time, using violence for political change. I'll concede Republicans, maybe as well, if his definition is that broad. However, that will eliminate his moral high ground for the justification of do what you want to them, because they're traitors. That would also make you a traitor. With that, I'll see my time. Note in that video um, that the entire audience, when he was asked this question by Pisco, said yes, we would have preferred that Trump wasn't alive during that uh, assassination attempt. Go ahead. Okay, um, so that I have six, approximately six minutes and 45 seconds there. Uh, like half of that was like just character assassinating destiny. Like the, I, the snorter thing is substance he said is people weren't charged for insurrection. And then also um, he, he'll say like if, if you argue insurrection is so loosely defined, um, to include J6, it would also have to include some of the BLM things. Uh, Destiny, I will reset the clock and allow you the same exact amount of time. Which, it, which none of the BLM things were like trying to stop. So this, it, we're trying to stop official proceedings in any way. Neither of the pro-Palestine protests at the Capitol right now. Also, they didn't enter the Capitol illegally. It, yeah. Stay fair here. Um, let me know when you are ready, and I'll restart the, the clock. Yeah, I'm ready. Whenever. Ready? Okay, I'm going to start it now. I'll give you 6.45, and go ahead, boy. All right, I believe that the subject of the debate is whether or not January 6th is an insurrection, or would you... Oh, my God. Stop talking fast. Fuck you. An insurrection. Um, originally, I thought this was going to be a 1v1 debate against me and Andrew, but I can do a 1v2 debate against my 2021 less educated self as well. Uh, I have no problem speaking to arguments I've made in prior clips. I have no problem speaking to current arguments made by Andrew. Uh, so we can head down that road. I think that the first thing that we need to acknowledge uh, when we talk about the structure of the United States government is that the Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. The Constitution is what powers our three branches of government, and it sits above every other part of our government, and every part of our government must comport to the Constitution. I think this is a foundational American belief uh, and principle, and if you don't share on this foundational belief, then we're never going to connect in any sort of meaningful way when we talk about how U.S. law
So that being said, there was an amendment to the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, and Section 3 of that amendment basically goes on to say that any prior oath taker that has engaged in or aided in uh, an insurrection is no longer allowed to hold office, essentially. Now, the question that we come uh, to today is trying to define what is an insurrection. And while in modern times, it seems like an insurrection is a term left to a dictionary or a term left to internet debaters, at the time that the, the amendment, the 14th Amendment, was framed, what was an, well, what was an insurrection was pretty well understood. Uh, an insurrection includes four vital elements. One is an assemblage, meaning a group of people that have come together. Two is resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Three is you have to do this by way of force or intimidation. And four is it has to be through a for a for a public concern or a public cause, not a private thing that one might be interested in. Um, just for some understandings of when we say an assemblage, uh, we can look to in 1861, uh, Justice Benjamin Curtis said a combination or conspiracy by which different individuals are united in one common purpose. So not just a bunch of people in a city protesting different things, but a group of people that are united in one common purpose. Um, we can look to Justice Samuel, uh, Samuel Chase uh, in the case of Freeze in the year 1800. He says, if a body of people conspire and meditate an insurrection to resist or oppose the execution of any statute of the United States, a statute such as the ECA, the Electoral Count Act, which is what they were united on January 6th to insurrect against. They were opposing the uh, execution of that. They are only guilty of a high misdemeanor, but if they proceed to carry such intention into execution by force, which we did see on the day of January 6th, regardless of if every member engaged in force or just one, uh, they are guilty of the treason of levying war, and the quantum of force employed neither lessens nor increases the crime, whether by 100 or 1,000 persons is wholly immaterial. doesn't matter if you have an insurrection of 50 people, 100 people, or 1,000 people. You only really need two people there to make it an insurrection. Um, <clears throat> In terms of whether or not they were uh, resisting a law or interfering with the cause of government, um, we can quote here, uh, an insurrection against the United States requires resistance to any statute or some public law of the United States. Um, this is a quote by a uh, judge um, in, I think, 1826. Uh, Curtis uh, spoke this to a jury. He says, the law does not distinguish between a purpose to prevent the execution of one or several or all laws. Uh, an insurrection could be directed at a legislature as well as at executive officials. Uh, William Rawl declared that an effort to coerce repeal of a general law to be an overt act of levying war. And um, Justice Field's opinion in, a, in the Great House Court case held that any effort to coerce the conduct of government constituted an insurrection such as when people went to the White House, or I'm sorry, went to the Capitol to coerce Pence to overthrow the election, which is what Donald Trump told them to do. Uh, by force or by intimidation, uh, quoting Justice Marshall in 1807, the most comprehensive definition of living war against the king or against the United States, which I have seen, requires an assemblage of men ready to act and with an intent to do some treasonable act and armed in warlike manner or else assembled in such numbers as to supersede the necessity of arms. You don't necessarily need weapons to do it. You could just have the, the numbers of people there threatening to use force or intimidation. Um, and then for a public purpose, obviously, um, the insurrection is to, I'm quoting Judge uh, John Cain here, insurrections to redress by force national grievances or to form real or imaginary evils of a public nature. Uh, obviously, they were uh, protesting the vote. That's what they were there to do. Uh, this is obviously a public issue. So to recount for the assembly, there were hundreds of people that reached the Capitol building. There were thousands that trespassed on federal land. For two, there was a clear resistance to the federal law. The trespassers were there to contravene the Electoral Count Act. There was a plethora of evidence brought up in the Anderson versus Griswold case about this, uh, where quoting the justices, uh, quoting the judges, not just the protesters, but literally the, the like the Eastman memos and the Chesbro members m memos, Jesus, all suggested that Mike Pence ignore the Electoral Count Act. On that case, they said substantial evidence in the record showed that the mob's unified purpose was to hinder or prevent Congress from counting the electoral votes as required by the 12th Amendment and from certifying the 2020 presidential election. The third element, the cap, they all, all of the memos were about subverting the Electoral Count Act. <laughs> None of this has to do with our discussion about whether the fake electors were required to subvert the Electoral Count Act, but all of them were, all of them were about the subverting the Electoral Count Act. Resistance made extensive use of force. This is self-evident just by watching any of the videos. To quote the Colorado Supreme Court again, the mob repeatedly and violently assaulted police officers who were trying to defend the Capitol. Uh, obviously, there were calls to hang Mike Pence, and people marched very famously with 1776 signs, which, as many of this audience might be familiar with, was a very popular insurrection in U.S. history, uh, or a rebellion even, one might say. And then for a public purpose, it was obviously for the public purpose of resisting the, what they perceived to be as the stealing of the election. Um, there are ways to try to counter this argument. We can either use nonsense definitions of insurrection, but that doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters was the public understanding and the legal also understanding destiny of destiny in 2x. Destiny is in 1.5x. Every time destiny speaks, I have to turn it back from 2x to... 1.5 at the time the 14th amendment was created and when section 3 was framed because that's what the constitution demands that we look at what was thought of as an insurrection when the language was added to the constitution uh we can try to divert by talking about blm or anything else and i'm happy to dive into all of those examples if we're going to concede on the original argument that january 6 satisfies all four elements of what i consider an insurrection to be um if we want to see that and move on to analyzing any particular blm action or whatever that's totally fine uh we can talk about the likeliness to work of which an insurrection has never been defined as an insurrection doesn't necessarily have to lead to the overthrow of a government that would be understood as a rebellion uh, every insurrection is not a rebellion though every rebellion starts as an insurrection and then when we say this is a common one as well why was no one charged with an insurrection uh people can be charged or couldn't be charged with crimes for a variety of reasons, but for purposes of the 14th Amendment, nothing in there requires the criminal conviction of the crime of insurrection, only that an insurrection occurred and that one engaged in it or aided it. All right. Uh, and that is 640. Okay. So uh, just five seconds shy. That completes the opening statements. Uh, really good arguments for both sides here. Uh, we'll go into round one. I'll turn it back. So we just completed opening statements, guys. Each party had six uh, minutes and 45 seconds to make their original stance. And uh, oh, he's on a new cigarette first, already. Uh, opening statements. We'll go round one. I'll set the clock for three minutes. Andrew, let me know when you are ready. And yeah, I'm ready. Okay, timer is going now. Go ahead. Yeah, so let's start with this idea of my definition. What the hell do I care about your definition? Nobody has been prosecuted for oh, any yes, insurrection by any definition. Oh my God. Destiny comes, okay. comes through and he gives us this list. He says one, an assemblage. Okay. Two, resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Okay. Three, by force or intimidation. Okay. Four, for a public purpose. He has just outlined 
basically almost every single political riot I've ever heard of. That is what that is outlined. So let's see an assemblage. This would cover a riot. A bunch of people assembling. Resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Uh, that could be shutting down roadways for commerce. That could mean anything. By force or intimidating. If you have Black Lives Matter, other groups like this who are out there saying no justice, no peace, that would be very intimidating. And then for public purpose, very nebulous. All of this is completely nebulous language. He has not actually given us a definition at all. Uh, by the way, if you could cam me while I'm talking, I'd appreciate it. Um, he has not there given us horrible just quibbling the definition of insurrection and deflecting from Wilson. That's a no, definition great to at hear. all. He's, he's just kind of given us this, this loose, nebulous um, you know, framework for what is or isn't a, uh, an insurrection. So let's kind of dive into a couple more things here. He says people can or can't be charged for a variety of reasons. He, that's not saying anything. So what? Yeah, that's true. Maybe they committed insurrection and they weren't charged for insurrection. But also maybe they did not commit insurrection and that's why they weren't charged with insurrection. Yeah. That's a non- Yes, maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> What an argument. He says what, a, what a philosophical elements, genius. Third element, self-evident Colorado aware, Supreme Court using 1776 signs. People, Dude, what the f- what? Why is they, they doing what? How how is their stream so this this fucked up, dude? Use 1776 signs all the time and have absolutely no interest in any type of rebellion whatsoever. It's very common for people to have those as bumper stickers. That doesn't mean that they're going to be engaging in any kind of rebellion or insurrection at all. He also, as he uh, talks about these various uh, rulings, he says treason of levying war comes in. He's Obviously, insurrection lot. seems to have something to do with levying war against the United States or at least some type of start to levy war against the United States. He still has not actually demonstrated any of this. He's just given us this really nebulous idea. An assemblage resisting any law or interfering with the course of government proceeding by force or intimidating for public. This is very nebulous. So unless Destiny is going to concede that it, anything which meets this criteria as an insurrection, uh, then I'm, I'm not even sure how to go Dude, forward with this. That's the criteria he gave for an insurrection. I would assume that he would think anything that meets the criteria would, um, would, would count as an insurrection. A uh, big reason why... Uh, the, the big reason why I assume he probably wouldn't think a lot of the BLM stuff doesn't count as an insurrection is, is because of the second point about trying to stop some like official proceeding. That, that wasn't exactly how it was phrased, but... This debate. How in the world can he say essentially almost any riot on planet Earth uh, or any assemblage, even a peaceful protest where they shut down the roads, is an insurrection? That can't be true. That just can't be true. Okay. Um. Uh, we had uh, ended there at about two fifty-seven. Andrew, you're up on, on our channel. They can see you. I don't know if it's. Yeah, up. we're good on mine too. Oh, you are okay. Perfect. I just want to make sure that we're there. So, but you are definitely up on. And I'm, whoever speak, I always make them the main person. So, that's I'm gonna put. Uh, this is round one. I'm gonna put three minutes on the clock for you. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Buddy. So, I think my definition is pretty clear. There's an assemblage. There's a clear resistance. The implementation or the. Holy shit! Please slow down, dude. The execution of some federal law, um, the resistance has an aim to make use of force or intimidation, and it's gathered for a particular public purpose. Uh, BLM almost automatically fails on the fact that these were not usually demonstrations against federal law. Uh, I don't know the federal yes, law or the federal thing that was being resisted by BLM, uh, but again, I'm happy to dive into any particular BLM supposed insurrection or riot uh, if you'd like. But again, I mean, that has nothing to do with January 6th. And if you want, then you can see that entire argument. We can move on to analyzing individual BLM instances. But again, you'd have to show that there was some implementation or carrying out of some federal function for it to be an insurrection against the United States government. States might have their own definitions of state interactions. I'm unaware of any. Um, so to uh, say again, uh, my definition of insurrection, like very clearly, has four elements. Uh, if you want to suggest an alternate definition that you feel more accurately comports with what you'd consider an insurrection to be, that's fine. But we can't just say that it's nebulous and there is no definition when we have um, we've got references made in our constitution and in our uh, federal criminal code to insurrection. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we can complain about people being charged with an insurrection or not, um, but whether or not somebody's charged with an insurrection again has nothing to do with the event itself. Do, um, for instance, if I were to look and see at any number of BLM uh, riots, if I were to look at a riot, would a challenge to that riot be what well, was anybody charged with rioting? If I could show you a riot where people clearly engaged in a riot, where there was a mass of people that were engaged and violent behavior that involved the destruction of some property or violent activity. But I would say, well, look, nobody was actually charged with rioting. Would you say then that, well, I guess nobody was actually, uh, or there wasn't a riot that actually happened? Nobody would make that uh, claim. There's a whole list of reasons why a prosecutor may or may not charge for particular crimes. Uh, in this particular case, there were really good reasons not to head down that uh, insurrection charge road because it would probably put the Supreme Court in a very hairy area, which, which they might end up getting into anyway, in terms of actually having a strict definition of what insurrection is. Um, but again, the 14th Amendment doesn't require a strict definition of insurrection in order to disbar somebody from running from office. Uh, all it needs is for a court to engage in asking the question of whether or not somebody had engaged in an insurrection, and if they had and were prior oath taker, then they were barred uh, from taking any uh, public office in the future. Uh, so yeah. Again, if, if there's an alternate definition that wants to be explored for an insurrection, then I welcome that. But that definition needs to have, so it needs to comport with the historical and legal understanding of what an insurrection was. Otherwise, it's just meaningless, meandering, um, yeah, opining that means nothing when we should be thinking, like, what was the definition of insurrection at the time the 14th Amendment was drafted? Okay, uh, that's two minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, you don't want to use the rest of 20 seconds, Destiny? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I mean like, there, we can, if this ends up going into like a whole bunch of like yelling stuff, I mean, we can get to that, but that has no bearing on whether J6 would be considered an insurrection or not, so. Okay, uh, so two minutes, 57 seconds. Uh, that completes round one. Um, I will restart the clock. We'll move into round two. I'll turn it back to you, Andrew. Uh, let me know when you're ready, and I'll turn the clock on. So I'm not claiming that this has anything to do with BLM. I'm doing an internal critique and saying that if you're going to apply these nebulous standards to this, then you must apply them to this. If this category of category A over here also would include everything like which has already like just admitted, like if you want to get into the BLM stuff, he's willing to go down that route. He, he explained why one, he thinks most of the BLM things fail because they weren't trying to stop any like execution of federal law. And um, and two, if you want to look at individual 
BLM events, we could do that, but that's of no relevance to whether or not J6 was an insurrection or not. Which includes a riot, then we would need to know what the delineating factor is. He, he claims here he must, there must be some federal element. However, that's not in his definition. His definition does not include any federal element to go over his definition. Wasn't that literally the second point of his definition? Again, definition? assemblage, resisting law, by force or intimidation for public purpose. It doesn't say anything about a federal element. He just pulled that out of his ass. I don't know where the hell he got that, but it's definitely not in his definition. If it was, he should have said that that was in his definition. He said he keeps going back to this illogical idea that just because X doesn't happen doesn't mean X isn't true. Yeah, that's true, but it also doesn't mean X is true. So making the claim that, well, wait a second, Andrew, just because they weren't actually charged with insurrection doesn't mean they weren't guilty of insurrection. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't mean they were either. And I have the evidence. He's not claiming that means they were. He's just claiming that it does. You brought it up as something that as, as like evidence that they're not. And now you're admitting that it's it's not evidence that they weren't involved in insurrection. He literally gave the example of like if I could show people engaging in, in a in a riot, but um like a BLM riot, if none of them were charged with rioting, would that be proof that they weren't rioting? <laughs> Evidence on my side as none of them were actually prosecuted for insurrection. None of them were prosecuted for insurrection and Trump was acquitted for inciting insurrection. So the evidence is on my I, side. I also just don't think I think he's misunderstanding that Supreme Court ruling. If I'm if I'm thinking about the same Supreme Court ruling that had to do with the 14th Amendment, I don't. That's just not what that said to my memory, at least. Right. He would actually have to demonstrate that this was an insurrection and that they were all wrong, that they were completely incorrect in not charging it this way. He just keeps saying, well, there's a variety of reasons why they didn't. Well, that's nice. Couldn't one of the reasons be because it wasn't an insurrection? Yes, that seems to be a very obvious reason, doesn't it? Um, going back to my opening, I just want to kind of point out that Destiny has uh, like um, hold on, let me changed see. his entire idea on this, whereas at first he claimed in 2021, this was in no way an insurrection that it fit the criteria of a riot better from anybody who's looking at it objectively. I agree with him. That's exactly what it fits. But he still has not demonstrated at all that this was actually an insurrection. He just says, well, I have this nebulous definition. He also says, give me a counter definition. It's not my burden to give you a counter definition. What do you mean? I'm not calling him insurrectionist. You're calling him insurrectionist. I don't have to define for you what that means. You have to define for me what that means. Giving me these four uh, elements here is meaningless unless you can tell me what goes in those categories specifically that does not go in. Like, look, hold on. This, this has nothing to do with whether or not Trump incited insurrection. They, I'm pretty sure they specifically chose to not comment on that at all. Thus, Sections 3 to 14 Amendment disqualified Donald Trump from holding office as the President of the United States and thus appearing on Colorado's 2024 presidential ballot. Um, even this question I would object to because really it was about whether states have the right to kick him off the ballot because, that, because of their own internal definition of insurrection. Well, states have the power to disqualify state officials under Section 3, they lack the authority to enforce Section 3 against federal office holders and candidates. In the category for rioting, because as I look at an assemblage, uh, resisting any law yes. by force or intimidating or for public, that could all just be rioting. That does not really tell me what goes in the category. You didn't include federal anything. So I would like for you to actually expand on this definition so I can understand what the hell you're talking about and why the J6 are specifically fit this criteria. All right. Um, that is two minutes and 49 seconds. He already uh, laid out why J6 you. fits it. Um, whenever you're ready. And we are in round two right now, the bottom of round. Yeah, so people, like, again, that, so there's two parts to the uh, insurrection, uh, two elements that I don't think would fit. So the first one is uh, an assemblage. That would clearly fit a riot, I think, but it, um, it would fit a riot and it would fit an insurrection. Um, the second part is resisting a particular law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. There are plenty of riots that aren't riots to resist, like, the implementation of a law or to interfere necessarily with, like, some government proceeding. We can imagine a million reasons why people might riot outside of a baseball game. People might riot... Um, in protest to a statement that was made or in, in relation to, um, I don't know, the outcome of a sporting event. Like, there's tons of people that can riot that aren't rioting with the goal of resisting the implementation of a particular law or trying to interfere with the course of some uh, government proceeding. So the, the part two, the second element I've listed, really wouldn't comport with, um, with most riots. Um, and then the third one is uh, the third element by force or intimidation. Um, I would say that riots generally have a forceful or intimidating aspect to them, although they generally happen spontaneously. Usually they're not planned in advance to use like force or intimidation. J6 um, so, was planned in advance. Uh, to quote uh, Justice Greer, uh, quote, legal authorities carefully distinguished planned insurrections from spontaneous riots. Uh, Justice Robert, Justice Robert Greer charged the grand jury in the United States v. Hanway that a defendant who was not leagued with violent resistors to federal law could not be prosecuted for treason. Uh, Greer insisted that spontaneous riots were not insurrections, that insurrections required a commitment to use force to resist law, not spur of the moment violence. Most riots just kind of like happen. Uh, it's pretty rare that they are planned in advance. And I think we all agree that if they are planned in advance, it takes on a much different character and arguably uh, could call under it like different types of crimes. If people uh, you know, engage in rioting, it's not good. But if people are literally planning it out in advance, we are calling in a whole bunch of different crimes there than just the simple thing of calling a particular thing a riot. And the fourth thing, when we say for a public purpose, the fourth element, this is the second thing that I don't think most riots would necessarily be in opposition to. That we are insurrecting for some sort of public grievance um relating to like the, the actions of a particular government uh so like you might riot for instance like blm might riot against like police violence but 
what is that? There's not like a particular federal statute or federal law there. Um, in terms of me specifying the federal part, well, I mean, J6 was a uh, insurrection against like a, a federal entity. Again, if we want to talk about like state insurrections or something, I, I guess we can. But the differentiating factor here is we have federal parts because we're talking about federal insurrections, and especially for the 14th Amendment, the federal insurrection part is what we're kind of talking about. I'm not even sure if you can do a state insurrection. Maybe you can. Um, but I mean, like summarizing this argument, like the Colorado court found that Donald Trump acted as part of an assemblage, okay, that he helped bring it to being. He called the people there. Uh, Trump was resisting the enforcement of federal and constitutional rules. He was contravening the 12th Amendment, and he was resisting the Electoral Count Act. Um, Donald Trump uh, took uh, numerous. Why is he not addressing the point that Andrew keeps bringing up? But it's stupid. Um, the stupid Trump was acquitted. Trump was acquitted. Well, actions to prevent the peaceful transition of presidential power. This is like a function of the government. Uh, he engaged in an ongoing and ongoing course of conduct and producing violent resistance to the people transfer of presidential power. And he was attempting to decide support. Uh, yeah. uh, what else? Okay. That is time. Uh, so what I'll do is um, that that concludes round two. Um, Andrew, uh, I'll turn it back to you unless you want me to give Destiny a little bit extra time. I can give you that extra time as well on the back end, but I'll let you choose that. Yeah, I'm fine. He can finish. Okay. Um, Destiny, go ahead and finish. And yeah, I will... my, sorry, the final point was that, um, yeah, but the, the, my final statement is, okay, if you look at the Colorado court case, they found that Donald Trump acted as part of an assemblage that he helped bring to being. It said that uh, Trump was resisting the enforcement of federal and constitutional rules, that Trump took numerous illegal actions to prevent the peaceful transition of presidential power. He engaged in an ongoing course of conduct aimed at producing violent resistance to the peaceful transfer of presidential power. Um, he attempted to incite his supporters to attack Congress, which they did, and that Trump's speech occurred sufficiently close in time and place to when and where the insurrection took place to be considered an like every single part of this, like very easily and very cleanly meets the definition of an insurrection. If we want to argue that my definition isn't clean or that my four elements are being met, that's, uh, well, I don't know how we could argue that. I think all four elements are being met. If we want to argue that, well, every single riot would, uh, you know, fall into this, then we could say, well, fine, Destiny, I agree. For your definition of insurrection, fine, January 6th was an insurrection. Now let's talk about these other events. We can talk about whether they fit or don't fit. Or you can give me your own definition of insurrection and then we can go from there. Okay, that had an extra 55 seconds. So that. we'll go into round three. Andrew, I will give you that. So you will have three minutes and 55 seconds to uh, yeah. your time. So uh, I'll start at the clock now. Yeah, so again, uh, trying to put the burden on me to give you a definition of your claim is insane. Uh, as we went through your he's definition here. He's already provided a definition. He, he's just saying that if you don't agree with my definition, then we then you can present your own definition and like discuss it. Like uh, It's really funny because I'm going to use your own logic back to you. Just because they weren't charged with an insurrection doesn't mean it wasn't oh an insurrection. Oh my God, Why, how are we still on this? Oh, okay. Well, they were actually charged with uh, elements of rioting. So I'm going to say it was actually rioting. And I'm also going to say that, wait a second, your definition here seems to be more about rioting than anything else by your own claim. An assemblage would fit a riot, says Destiny. That's his first claim. Resisting any law or interfering with the course of government proceeding. It wouldn't fit rioting itself, says Destiny, even though rioting itself is against the law. What do you mean? Of course it's impeding the law. Well, how could it not be impeding the law? Rioting itself is against the law. I don't know where the hell you came up with that. By force or intimidation, Destiny concedes riots require. Just because you break the law doesn't mean you're trying to, like, um, Fuck, what was the exact wording used? I mean, you're trying to, like, stop the, like, official, any, like, the, the law from, like, acting in official capacity. Shoot, what your was definition the, what here was seems to be more about wording. writing than anything else by I your own I claim. I, had, like, I should have written it down. Fit a riot, says Destiny. That's his first claim. Resisting I any knew law. he was going to say that, too. Interfering the course of government proceedings. It wouldn't fit writing itself, says Destiny, even though writing itself is... Interfering in the course of government proceedings. Just because you break the law, does like, you're not, like, interfering interfering the course of government proceeding in the same way that January 6th protesters were very specifically trying to interfere with the certification of vote against the law or we could imagine a million other hypotheticals where someone was trying to interfere with some specific government proceeding what do you mean of course it's impeding the law well, how could it not be impeding the law rioting itself is against the law i don't know where the hell you came up with that by force or intimidation destiny concedes riots require force for a public purpose he concedes that's a riot so really under his definition this is just a riot and the only thing that we're arguing about here is number two resisting any law or interfering with the course of government proceeding let's try this again resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. A riot itself is uh, resisting the law because it's illegal to riot. So I don't understand how that, again, would not just be a riot. All of these things seem to fall into the category of what people were charged with, which is much more along and akin to rioting than it is any type of insurrection. He still hasn't told us the distinction that fits in this category, why this isn't a riot, even though everybody was charged under that kind of branch of rioting and not charged for insurrection. This is a garbage definition. It's totally nebulous, right? And he keeps on saying, well, wait a second, Andrew, why don't you go ahead and concede that unless you can go against all four of these points, why don't I actually have to do that? All I need to do is say, okay, all these four points fit a different criteria better than insurrection. And apparently he agrees. He agrees on point one, point three, and point four. The only thing he argues is point two, but his argument for point two makes no sense because writing itself is illegal so therefore you are resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding well the government proceeding is to enforce law you would be interfering with the government enforcing law if you're writing so all of these follow the better criteria of riot which is it's totally consistent in my mind because that was the criteria in which people were charged not with insurrection and i really need destiny to answer to that okay uh, that was two minutes and 40 seconds you still have a minute left Andrew. you're gonna concede that round then yeah i'll let him i'll let him go ahead and answer to it cool so i'm gonna so um i will turn it back to you destiny we're in round uh, three and uh, this is the second part of round three so your turn to start, uh, start the clock back up for you breaking a law and resisting law are not the same thing usually when people riot yes. they're not rioting with the purpose of making arson or murder or um or whatever other crimes are being broken to make those legal things. Usually they're breaking laws, not with the intent of like resisting the implementation of the execution of those laws or resisting or uh, contravening the execution of like some functional government. Um, when people were rioting on January 6th, the goal of that was to stop the execution of the Electoral Count Act. It was to stop the purpose of the government, the execution of functional government to do the peaceful transfer of power. They weren't simply engaged in violence and breaking the law. They were resisting the carrying out of the law, the Electoral, uh, the electoral Count Act, the ECA. Um, and again, I don't know, we can live on this over and over again, but again, if I can show you in Kenosha, if I can show you in Seattle, if I can show you a riot, if I can give you a video of cities burning, of people screaming and throwing shit, of you know, property being destroyed or damaged, and then you would go, wow, that kind of looks like a riot. And I would go, yeah, kind of does. However, nobody
in support of like the BLM uh, policy changes, but there, but it was not, it was not remotely comparable to protesters breaking into the Capitol to try to stop the certification of the vote. These are very, these are clearly different things. Or not a particular event was a thing. Remember, when you levy a, a charge at somebody, a criminal charge, what you're really saying is that you can take a person, an individual, and prove beyond a reasonable doubt that no reasonable mind would, um, would agree that something else could happen in front of a jury. That's what criminal court is for. Proving that somebody engaged in a crime beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal court is not the standard that we use to declare a particular thing a thing. You don't have to prove in criminal court beyond a reasonable doubt that a thing was an insurrection or that a thing was a riot unless we were charging somebody with an actual crime. Okay, uh, there's uh, that's 1.50 on the clock. So um, that concludes round three. And I'm going to turn it to you, gentlemen. You guys can let me know what you want. We can either do another round of three minutes uninterrupted debating if you guys want to formally argue. Well, why don't he should just let them go at it? Like, why, why is he doing this? I would like to do one more round. Was the Boston Tea Party a riot or insurrection? Um, probably a riot, but I mean, you could argue it's part of a greater, greater rebellion slash insurrection. Are you okay with that? Sure. Insurrections can be justified, by the way. <laughs> just know that's what you're doing. <laughs> okay, and then after that, so we'll go into a fourth round with a three-minute uh, debate time limit where no interruptions. And after that, we can get into the five minutes of discourse between you two where you can actually speak. But is that fair for everybody? Sure. sure. Cool. All right, so I will go ahead and reset the clock. Uh, this will be round four. Uh, take it away, Andrew. Yeah, so this is uh, this is an absurd argument. We'll go right back to Destiny's logic again. He says just because uh, you know somebody wasn't charged with X doesn't mean X didn't happen. Uh, this is the same. This is complete total obfuscation, by the way. Because ultimately, what's going on here is that these do fit the criteria much better for a riot. And under the purview of rioting, these are the, the types of charges which were levied at these people. Destiny says specifically under point two. He said, and he didn't answer to this. He said resist, resisting any law or interfering with the course of government proceeding. It's not just in terms of severity. They're like different, different in what their what their goal is. Like um, a lot of the BLM protests. First of all, a lot of the a lot of the BLM riots were protests that like opportunistic people turned into riots because they wanted to loot shit. They weren't like pre-planned. Like we are gonna go here and riot and burn down these buildings because we want to do so and so. They were more like we're gonna go here and protest. And then a lot of times uh, they broke curfew. And then opportunistic people said, "Hey, there's a big, there's a lot of crazy shit going on here with this big protest. We're gonna start firebombing Walmart so we can steal all the sweet new PS5s." It's not just in severity; it's that they differ and like what they're trying trying to do like like however you want to split the um however you want to delineate the difference between breaking into the capital to stop the specific sort of the specific the certification of vote the specific execution of the electoral count act versus just riding in support of a like general cause um it just sounds like the difference between first and no it's not like well maybe but those are but those are different i mean both are lumped under the broad umbrella and murder but those are like different crimes uh like however you want to delineate between stopping the certification of vote and riding in um in support of a more general cause and once again although these are riots um so a lot of them were spontaneous riots that weren't pre-planned i don't know if any of them were necessarily pre-planned to be a riot um but yeah wouldn't fit writing yes it does fit writing it fits writing better than anything else i can think of yes you are immediately Upon rioting, resisting the law, and you are obstructing the law immediately. That is what a riot is. It's an unlawful assembly. So how he could say this? In fact, each point, he concedes on point one, an assemblage that would fit a riot. An assemblage would fit a riot. That's point one. He agrees. Okay? Point three, by force or intimidation, uh, intimidation he agrees on point three that that is a riot. He agrees on point four. He conceded on that as well. And then he just conceded on point two. He couldn't exactly tell us why resisting any law interfering with the course of government proceeding wouldn't fit a riot. Of course it fits a riot. All of these, in fact, fit the events of January 6th perfectly perfectly and if he's conceding that hey these fit a riot perfectly the events of january 6th were a riot under this definition which he essentially has conceded is true then the charges were appropriate that this was a riot and not an insurrection this could not have been an insurrection that his own definition proves that this is more akin to a riot he still hasn't really told us by the way what an insurrection is just these kind of four nebulous points but these four nebulous points fit a riot perfectly perfectly and he's basically conceded to three of them on the outset and then on the second he's basically conceded that as well because resisting any law interfering with the course of government proceeding would fit a riot by its very nature the reason it would fit a riot by its very nature is because it's immediately an unlawful assembly you're resisting the law you're resisting the police you're resisting 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 so whether that's done at a federal level or a state level i think it would still fate, uh, uh, meet the same fate of being more akin to a riot this definition really moves towards a riot and not towards an insurrection he's not told us the distinction yet and so again i think that the entire reason he wants to only paint it as an insurrection even though nobody's ever been charged with an insurrection even though trump was cleared of inciting an insurrection is so that he can make justifications for why the other side deserves what it gets because they're a bunch of traitors thus far no i'm sorry this uh, this definition or this logic adds up the logic of saying well just because it, they weren't charged with the thing I mean, it wasn't the thing. Fine, but that doesn't mean it was the thing either. And by your criteria, it seems like it was this other thing. Okay, that's three minutes and ten seconds. Uh, I will make the clock the same for you, Destiny, to keep it fair. Uh, I will start the timer if you're ready now. Yeah, I don't. I, I guess we're still on these points. Um, resisting a law is not the same thing as breaking a law. If you could show me that there was a particular riot where people assembled, and the goal of that riot was when they were rioting, they wanted to riot to make rioting legal, um, and that they had gathered, you know, in order to change the law in a particular area, and they were going to use force and intimidation to do it. We're here to riot today because we're to make rioting legal. Then sure, then we could argue that that's probably an insurrection. Um, but I mean, these are the four elements that were historically understood at the time. Nobody had any issues at the time charging people with crimes of insurrection. Nobody had any confusion at the time historically. Um, you had racial rebellions, the Whiskey insurrection, the Burr insurrection, John Brown's raids. Um, you had convictions of, um, you know, like a Pennsylvania farmer, uh, I think, set fire to a house of tax collector in 1794. He was charged with an insurrection. Um, John Fries and friends made show harms that resulted in the release of federal tax evasion. That was considered an insurrection. Uh, in 1847, when his Native American attacked occupying American officials in New Mexico. The Marxist thinking. What?
Oh, you're applying to NRK life. I was really confused. That was considered okay. an insurrection in 1851 when Pennsylvania obstructed official efforts to capture an alleged fugitive, fugitive slave. That was an insurrection in 1856 um, when there were uh, rival forces in the United States that were violently resisting the laws on slavery. That was considered an insurrection. Um, these aren't just like riots where people are like, we're mad, we're breaking the law by being violent. It was they were resisting the law. They were resisting an actual like federal law claiming that that particular law shouldn't exist. They were trying to air public grievance through force or intimidation with an assembled group of people in the in the in the goal of like overturning that particular thing through violent action. Um, and then in this final thing, so there's a difference between resisting law and breaking law. Just because you're engaged in a riot doesn't mean that you're resisting the implementation of law. People are engaged in riots and usually rioting to make riots legal. That's what would make that legal one. And then just the crime of X is not the same thing as the event of X. I don't know what you can say. Nobody was charged with insurrection. Cut. Can I not say that there was a murder here? If nobody was charged with murder. If I see 20 people saying fire to a house and they all run away. Nobody gets charged with arson. Can I not say that an arson happened? If I look on video and I see that there's 500 people blowing up, you know, some shit, and they manage to run away, the cops, you know, can't arrest these people, charge them with like the formal like, crime of rioting. I mean, there was no riot that took place. The crime of X is different than the event of X. And right now, we're talking about if January 6th was an insurrection. Not did any individual person engage in the criminal behavior of insurrection. That would be a separate conversation. If we had a conversation, we could. But we would have to first see that an insurrection did indeed take place on January 6th. And that would be the Colorado Supreme Court engaged in good analysis and they decided that an insurrection had taken place because it comports with all four elements that gave to an insurrection that were common. Jesus, hold on. Okay. I understand most of what he said, but oh, oh my God that an insurrection did indeed take place on January 6th, and I believe that the Colorado Supreme Court engaged in good analysis and they decided that an insurrection had taken place because it comports with all four elements that I gave to an insurrection that were commonly understood in the historical and legal record around the time that the uh, 14th Amendment was passed when they were putting insurrection in the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to prevent prior oath takers from holding office again who had engaged in insurrection. Okay, uh, so that completes round four of the three-minute uninterrupted uh, rounds. Uh, if you guys are okay with it, we will move on to the five-minute round where you guys are able to actually oh have God. open discussion. Well, I have a quick, I have a quick counter if Destiny wants to agree to this uh, for the purpose of, uh, of fairness. Um, I'm, willing to do, uh, I'm willing to do two rounds of internal critiques, and I'll allow Destiny to start with an internal critique if I can move to an internal critique after. So two five-minute rounds of internal critiques, does that sound fair? What do we mean when we say internal critique? What does that mean? It means that I'm just here to answer your questions for five minutes, and you're here to answer mine. Um, sure. Okay, I'll let you go first. Okay, so uh, so, okay, just so I uh, make sure I have this right, so I can moderate it properly. Is he going to question you, Andrew? And you're yeah, he gets round one, five minutes, and then I get round two, five minutes. Oh my okay, God. so basically, okay, so back it's back to good old days where people would just hop in Discord VC together. No moderator, don't need any of this cringe, admiring shit. Just, just hop in the Discord VCs. Just have, just have the conversation. That's a Q&A between the two of you. Where, okay, so right, Destiny, if you're okay with that, we can do that, or we can go to just open discourse between the two of you. Where you I think I, I feel like it probably because I feel like um part of my argument is maybe that he hasn't put forth like a positive position yet for me to even attack or interrogate. So I'm not even sure what I would do on the Inquisition round. So I feel like it'd be better to just do back and forth. Okay, well if you want to do it back and forth, I'm prepared for that too. Okay, but you guys with no more. You don't need any more three minute rounds to uh, solidify your stance. No. no. Okay, so I will go ahead and um, set the timer here for five minutes. Uh, I will. I guess who wants to kick it off? Uh, I can kick it off uh, real quick. Okay. So Destiny, oh. would you agree with me that uh, the motivation for demonizing the opposition political party often revolves around calling them traitors, uh, accusing them of treason, and pushing for um, you know some type of villainization? That they are against the country, they are against you, they are against everybody. Well, for another debate, maybe, but that's not at all any of the subject here, any of the subject matter here. Well, I think it is. I think it ties in because I believe that the motivation for why you're claiming that the other side are a bunch of insurrectionists, though you have no direct evidence of this, and your own criteria is just that of basically a riot, that your motivation is just to demonize the opposition. Sure, but this isn't a debate over my motivation. I could be motivated by 100 million different bad faith factors. Oh my god, holy shit. Okay. 1.5. Well, we, we, we gotta suffer through to 1.5 times speed. That your motivation okay. is just to demonize the opposition. Sure, but this isn't a debate over my motivation. I could be motivated by 100 million different bad faith factors, and literally none of them would be relevant to this conversation. It could be the yeah. fact that the DNC actually paid me money to give this precise argument, and Kamala's on the phone with me right now, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have any impact on this particular debate. I think it would. Be. I think that the motivation for why you're making the argument itself would have an impact on the debate. But I am willing to concede that if you just want to keep it to the material, we can. Let's move over to point two then. Point two, you say resisting any law or interference with the course of a government proceeding wouldn't fit rioting itself. How does that not fit rioting itself? Of course it does. Well, let's say, for instance, the purpose of a riot was because you felt like the law wasn't being enforced. It wouldn't make sense to call that part of an insurrection. Let's say, for instance, that there was a, let's say that there was a lynching of a person and you felt like the cops weren't, you know, upholding their duty or whatever. And so you decided to have a, a protest that turns into a riot and you'll show up with the goal of protesting and rioting because you felt like the law wasn't being carried out here. You wouldn't really call that an insurrection because they're not trying to contravene a legal process. Um, just because, again, you engage in unlawful conduct doesn't mean that you're trying to resist, like, the implementation of the carrying out, resisting the laws. Thank yep. you for the sub. Um, the move decay, uh... Archridge? Arch I have no clue how to pronounce that. Sorry, but in case with insurrection. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Then. No, because when you're interrupting, would require, would you're also trying to require say, intent. Right? Yes, yeah, correct. Yes. So the intent would be the contravening of the Electoral Count Act. When people say we need to march and make our voices heard on January 6th to the Capitol grounds where people are going to protest, they're protesting the execution of the Electoral Count Act, which demanded that Vice President Pence count the electoral votes. Donald Trump didn't want that. He made it very clear in the days preceding him. Well, they're not just protesting it. They're preventing they're preventing it. That's what that's what they delayed it. They succeeded in delaying it. They didn't succeed in um and delaying it long enough to, um, or I guess enough people stood up to Trump to not have any of them either not have Mike Pence either throw out the vote entirely or to, uh, or not entirely, but just the states that needed to be thrown out or to have any of the state officials that Trump tried to call, um, either, um, certify Trump's fake electors or to, uh, not certify their vote. Eastman, Chesbrough, and everybody else that was working alongside him, um, Sidney Powell, everybody else, was saying that we need to prevent Pence from counting the electoral vote. That was the execution of a lawful government function. Yeah, but, even, an act, of, people going there yeah, but even if all that's true, Destiny, it, wouldn't, it still wouldn't matter because the events of January 6th themselves, the intent of the people could have just been to riot, not indeed to commit to any sort of treasonous insurrection activity. And you have failed to demonst
This is the most armed nation on planet Earth. How in the world can you say these people showed up specifically in order to do that? That makes no sense, man. None of this law, uh, none of that argumentation was secretary. People very quick, they obviously showed up to protest the uh, certification of the vote. They were called there by Donald Trump. If it's a non sequitur, then you in 2021 were using a non sequitur when you made the argument that from the appearance of this, it could not have been an insurrection. Or maybe he just changed his mind. 2021 or? destiny was incorrect because 2021 destiny didn't have the mm -hmm. historical context to understand an insurrection. If you want to bring him on here and talk to him, you can, but I don't I agree with everything that I said. Not, not not. I am 2024 destiny. I've learned more things. I've done more studying. I've read more papers and I've done more research on this. There is actually a strong understanding of what an insurrection is, and there was a strong historical understanding of what an insurrection is. And the idea that a bunch of people were called on January 6th, the date wasn't a mistake. When Donald Trump sent them down there to protest, when he said, we need Mike Pence to do the right thing, what was he talking about? He wanted him to contravene the law, and that's what people marched down there for them no, to do. Donald yes. Trump, Donald Trump said 30 minutes before this began that this needed to oh remain. My God. He also, by the way, started calling for protest on December 19th. I, I think it's really, I think these text messages are really funny. Um, so basically, Kenneth Trisro and Jim Troopas, who were two of Trump's aides, basically met with Trump on December 16th, um, and they said, they showed him this uh, November 18th memo, which Chesbro, Chesbro wrote uh, do, 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 about the fake elector scheme, basically. This is them preparing to cast fake elector votes. Uh, he describes January 6th, the hard deadline, right? That is the hard deadline for when they need to have all this, all the, all the shit planned out, okay? <laughs> so they meet with him December 16th, and then three days later, Trump makes his first call for protest on... Um, January 6th, okay? And then Keneth texts Jim and says, based on, th he sends a, this is a link to an article about J uh, Donald Trump calling for protests on January 6th. And he says, wow, based on three days ago, I think we have a unique understanding of this. <laughs> Obviously, Donald Trump was um, told that January 6th was the hard deadline, and that's when they needed the most. That's when they needed all the, um, all the pressure to come out on Mike Pence to not certify to vote. Um. Yeah, <laughs> he was clearly calling the, he was he was calling them down for over or not, I guess not quite a month to um to come process the certification. Yeah. In a peaceful protest. No, he didn't. He never said that. He did. I actually no, have the tweet. I have on the tweet. tweet. He, said he did. He did say that. In the speech, he, he said to fight like hell. And in the speech, he said that we need to go down. I'm talking about his tweets. Why, 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 why would a person put out a tweet to be peaceful if their intent was insurrection destiny? Why would a person call a protest on January 6th? What do you think they were protesting? What do you mean? They they call protest. People call protests all the time. That doesn't mean we're not talking about other protests. I'm asking you, what, what, what was the purpose of the protest on January 6th? The purpose of the protest was to go out and show support for Donald J. Trump. For what? Well, there was a variety of reasons. No, give me. Wait, wait. Are you telling me we can't understand what the January 6th protest was about? No, no, no. Are you saying there wasn't a variety of reasons why people didn't show up? No, nope, I think there was one clear reason. Oh, there's only one reason why one everybody clear reason. showed up. Correct. Okay, that's okay. Okay. okay, what is the one clear reason? There was not a variety one of clear reason why Trump wanted them there, and that was to, at the very least, delay the certification vote. Some people didn't show up just because they wanted to see what was happening. Some people didn't show up just to support the president. Some people didn't show up because they really like to go to protest. That's everybody right. showed up for one reason. I didn't say right. everybody showed up for one reason. I said they were called there for one reason, and that was to protest the certification of the election. Guys, 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 that is time. Um, I'm happy to let this play out longer if you guys want, uh, and add an extra minute to the clock. Uh, are you guys okay with that? Yeah, we uh, can add an extra minute. I'm fine with that. Clock and well, this is round, still round one of the open discourse, uh, but just try to limit it to one minute, and then we'll go into round two of it, uh, and then uh, and we can go from there. If we need more rounds uh, at the five minute mark, we Trump can. Wanted to, what do you think he was trying to do when he called people there on January sixth? Do you think he just he wanted them to to what? And he, they were chanting uh, chanting "Hang Mike Pence," and he said Mike Pence is going to have to come through for what for us. Trump wanted there to go pro, uh, to uh, go protest an egg on Mike Pence. Egg on Mike Pence to do what? to not certify to vote or certify to fake electors or some by some means overturn the election, right? No, so, yeah, I ha so I have a problem with him ascribing motivation to all. He says there's one clear reason why everybody showed up. That's clearly not true. That doesn't even logically make sense. He could never demonstrate in a million years that there was only one clear reason why everybody showed up. Reason That's why a he called them there. nonsensical argument, Destiny. That's not the argument that I'm making. If the, if the, debate, was, the, if the, the debate is whether or not January 6th is an insurrection, not did every single person on January 6th. Yes, true, which would have overturned the election. Thank you. Yes, that's why he was trying to call in there to do that and arguably to put pressure on other officials. That's why he called. That's why he called. Um, well, the, the riot was going on. That's why that's why he called state officials like in Georgia saying, can you send over voter information? Um, the 11,000 or was that call on January 6th? No, that call, was, I think, was early. That call was on January 2nd, I think. But that's why he during that time, he and Giuliani called state officials while the protest was going on, asking them to um, not certify the vote. Engage in the crime of insurrection or did every single person on January 6th go with the intent? That's to why he tried to. This was I don't think this wasn't on January 6th. No, mind. Did you say there was one clear I said that there was a clear that. reason why people were called there because there was. Donald Trump called people there to protest not on January 5th and not on January 7th and not in a random part of D.C. and not in a random part of the country. He called them on January 6th to uh, to the uh, to the ellipses that was less than a mile walk away from the
Capitol building, which is where he sent every single person after his speech. He called them there on the day of the certification of the votes, after spending days motivation. trying to pressure Pence to overturn the election. That he told them that they need to go and protest doesn't. for the lawful slates of electors to be counted, the illegitimate ones to be submitted, and people went there, well, they engaged in violent behavior, and they managed to delay the certification of the election, which is exactly So then do you admit then, do you admit then that they happen to do exactly what- Even if I grant your logic- They happen to do every single thing that an insurrection called for without actually engaging in an insurrection? You have a chance to respond. So not only not only do I concede nothing, but your logic- we ran out of time on that round. So what I'll do is this. I can see that this is a dynamic conversation and clearly it's going to go out the bounds sometimes of a time round. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set the clock for 10 minutes. Uh, well, that, that completes round one of the open discourse. But I see that this is a dynamic argument. Me just stopping it randomly at five minutes would probably be stupid. So I'm going to let it play out for 10 minutes on the clock and have you guys go at it. Is that okay with both of you? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Sure. That's okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because I don't want to interrupt you guys again like that. So I'll just go ahead and put 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, and I will start it right now. You guys, you can pick right off where you left off. Yeah. And sorry about so, that. so to respond, right? Don't be more charitable with the time back your way. Now that we have ten minutes, Destiny. But it's actually an illogical argument to make to say even if Donald Trump had some certain intent in his head, uh, that would not mean that the people who were showing up for the protest had that intent. So the thing is, is like for you, both Destiny ways, never said that. A double entendre for your own logic. Either one, you claim, wait a second, there's one clear reason everybody showed up, or two, no, there was no clear reason why everybody showed up. They had multiple motivations. Even if Trump himself had a different motivation, this is illogical argumentation. I'm sorry, but this would never be applied to anything. If somebody says, hey guys, we're all going to show up, That's so we can go either. and I'm making right now if somebody were to make the call and say hey guys we're all going to show up to go and blow this building up and a bunch of people showed up and then a bunch of them marched for the crowd and then they all went and a building got blown up we wouldn't say like oh well we don't know what the intention of the crowd was we don't know what the intention of the leader there was we don't know what actually happened there because we can't divine the intention of every single individual per that's person a, that's a we can say we can say that's you can call it a straw man but the idea that in order for me okay hold on what would it what would i need to so show no, then no 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 wait hold on what would i need to show what would i need to show what would i need to show i'm not spurging but you're not even letting me talk you can respond to my argument you can phrase an argument let me respond and then you can ask the second argument i think that that's fair so when you're talking about this from a logical standpoint when you say oh if somebody called and said hey we're all going to this building up yes i would agree that you could probably ascribe the motivation to it then can you show me a treat a tweet or any type of true accurate i mean they were chanting hang mike pence because they wanted mike pence to not certify the vote anything from donald trump saying hey guys show up we're gonna do an insurrection no he yes. just made the shit up okay fine so i can so as part of donald trump's speech i'll give you two quotes our country has had enough we will not take it anymore and that's what this is all about and use a favorite term that all you people really came up with we will stop this steal today i will lay out just some of the evidence proving that we won this election we won it by a landslide this was not a close election the first quote the second quote we must stop the steal and then we must ensure that such outrageous election fraud never happens again can never be allowed to happen again when he says stop the steal, when they're at the Capitol building on January 6th, and when the election is being certified, what does stop the steal mean there? Uh, wait a second. So first of all, you're attributing to Donald Trump's rhetoric here uh, something which he may not have intended. None of that actually oh shows or demonstrates that he was calling for an insurrection on the Capitol. You are just kind of ascribing that motivation. He also, again, was calling for them to go to January 6th uh, all the way back in December 19th. It for the purposes of convenience. You have to show me there where he calls, like your example was, if I say we're all going to show up and blow up this building, that was your example, and then people show up and do it, we can understand their motivation. I agree. You have to show me where he says, okay, guys, we're all going to show up and do an insurrection. You can't then take words that don't say anything about an insurrection and say, but I think he meant that, though. So then just before I answer this, what would I have to show you to show that an insurrection was what Trump was planning? What kind of you would have to you give me the, You would have to give me the criteria first and foremost of something which did fit that. the criteria of an insurrection better than some other thing. And you would have to make it refutable to that thing from what people were charged under. So if the, if the criteria is, I'm going to give you what I think an insurrection is, and it fits a different criteria better than an insurrection, and, and under that criteria, that's what people were basically charged under, then it sounds like the other thing makes more sense than an insurrection. So that, we're going with that the argument totally that for X to event me. to have happened, X, like some person needs to have been charged with the crime? No, your logic there is faulty. Then why, well. why do you have the second no, element let me there? Respond, let me respond. Well, hold on. You so, can't just talk for twenty minutes and then as soon as I say one. Why no, localist party. If you if you got if we get some stuff in here, then you would then you don't need to then you don't need to watch the ads. <laughs> You can't ask me a question, minutes, question and then move to another question. question and then ask another question as part of my question. I'm able to do yeah, that. Yeah, but I wasn't you able gave to respond. two elements to what needed, I needed to prove. Um, the second one was I have to show why people weren't charged with a crime. I've answered this thing 50 million times. We can set up just as one point if you want. Just because uh, somebody hasn't been charged bro. with a crime with X doesn't <laughs> mean that. Why, that's why I'm begging for subs. You think I'd be begging for subs if I, if I, if I, was, if I didn't need them? Events related to X didn't occur. This is true. Of yeah, but the opposite would equally be true. The opposite. You guys are under no obligation to sub. I love, I actually love that people watch my videos so much. Like, on it. Like, I want to be fucking fucking YouTubers and I'm six years old. Okay. So I'm fucking glad people are here. Okay. Thank you. It is also true. Just because they weren't charged with the crime of X doesn't mean they committed the crime of X either. I'm not Destiny. making that argument. You're using this argument as a way to negate my argument. Just yes. because I'm not making it. It's a call the counter argument. Yes. No, hold on. That would be Being like a payout um, from only from Twitch, but yeah. Like you saying John couldn't have murdered Jane because John wasn't there, and then I say, well, no, that's not true, and then you're going, well, just because John was there doesn't mean that he murdered Jane. No, nope, the opposite. The that I'm nope, giving. the opposite I'm is true. I'm giving you four clear things. Wait, 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 like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, the opposite is true. That, or give me a definition of insurrection, or do you think stop, it's stop, stop, stop. Thing? Hang on, hang on. The opposite is true. I'm not saying that. So you say, oh, John murdered Jane, uh, but that can't be true because he also may not have murdered Jane. You're making the claim John murdered Jane, and so I say, okay, that's your claim that he murdered Jane. Can you define for me what the criteria would be in which you would consider this to be murder? And you go, well, and then you define for me something that is not murder or fits some other criteria better. Not a rational human being, including you. Take that and understand, wait, if it fits this other criteria
what part of my? How, can you give me an example? I'm just curious, and I shouldn't even engage with this because so just up to this point, you've given me no definition of insurrection. You seem unwilling to fit. It's not my burden. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying you've given me no definition no, of insurrection. You seem unwilling to do something. My question would be: Can you give me a riot? Can you give me a riot that would fit all four points that I've given of what I find insurrection? Well, then you must accept my definition of insurrection. You're saying that, you're saying that my definition, accept your definition? Because you're saying that my definition of insurrection isn't valid because it also applies to riots. And I'm telling you very clearly, no, it doesn't. Because riots don't typically happen in a planned manner to contravene the uh, execution of some government function or the implementation of some particular law. That's so not I'm what your definition you, says. Your I definition said, I said, says resisting, 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 resisting some law, law or interfering with the course mm -hmm. of a government proceeding. Correct? Yeah, so you're just changing your definition. I'm not resisting. Do you think that resisting a law is the same thing as breaking a law? Uh, I think that it could be synonymous <laughs> inside of people's minds, but no, no, I can see the distinction with merit. But when you say resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding, that sure sounds like a riot to me, Destiny. Okay, can you give me an example of a riot where that happens? Well, yeah, where BLM burned down a police station. That seems like it's um, First, resisting that's not, that's, the law. Yeah, so that's, what, what law were they resisting the implementation of? What law uh, were the they law resisting? The law of arson, the law of rioting, okay. all sorts of laws. So you're, <laughs> you're telling me that those riots laws. were trying to make it so that arson was legal? Can you point me to a tweet? Can you point me to a statement where somebody was saying we're rioting because we think that the laws against well, arson wait are illegal? A second. Can you show me in your definition where it says that the purpose of the insurrection is so that they can make something else legal? Because that's nowhere in your definition. Resisting it? any law or interfering with the uh -huh. course of a government proceeding. It doesn't say yes. anything about making something else legal. You just made it up. No, you're, what, you're saying that they're resisting the law of arson. Nobody's arguing that the law of yeah. arson is bad. Just because you're breaking a law doesn't mean you're what's resisting the, or, the what's law. The or, what's the or? The or for what? It says or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Would you not consider if somebody interfered with the FBI, for instance, for that to be interfering with the course of a government proceeding? Or if somebody interfered with police officers, that that would be interfering with the course of a government police proceeding? Police officers are not federal police officers. They if you want to talk about federal, interfering with, if you want to talk about, if you want to, where you are, because we're talking about January 6th. We have your definitions. Where did required. January 6th happen? Oh my God. Who, but it does, we have your definition. Why would I be arguing about the definition of an insurrection in a state when we're talking about an insurrection that happened? Well, then the can you show grounds? me in your definition where it says it must be federal? For I don't need to. We're occur? talking about insurrection well, that occurred on federal grounds. It doesn't matter. So then any, any of the criteria which would apply at the state level would still apply at the federal level for writing. It's I don't thing. know if insurrections are state defined. I'm not aware of that in the historical record. Can you point we can't me out where we have a state insurrection? I, I'm not aware you? of something. Can you show me where in the historical record where that's I'm just state? asking why you couldn't have one. Because I'm not aware of any having occurred historically. That doesn't mean you couldn't have one. You just claimed that it's possible. I didn't make a claim. Oh, okay. Then we're not, no one is claiming here that an insurrection is. No, possible. you are making a claim. Right. You're making a claim. I'm on making your a positive points. claim that there could be a federal insurrection right. because, because I have a historical record of there being statements about insurrections federally and historically. I've never had a statement about a state insurrection. I'm not aware of any of those. If you yeah, are aware, you not being aware of any doesn't mean that it, the criteria could not apply to a state insurrection, correct? That's correct. But we're talking yeah, about an insurrection correct. that happened on federal grounds. So we're obviously yeah, talking I agree, about federal but your definition doesn't require federal anything. That's okay, not what so your definition no, requires. Okay, I think um, uh, if this is if if the only holdout you have is that your definition of resisting a particular law just means that you are breaking a law, then I think I'm satisfied at any. No, no, it's not. Or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. This could be localized or non-localized. It can be. No one here has made any. Yeah, it can be. Okay, well, if those are your two holdouts that you think. Well, okay. Well, what is or, what is or interfering or the with the course, course of a government proceeding mean? What does that mean? The record that I'm invoking, we're especially talking about things relating to insurrection, and we're talking about the invocation of insurrection, which is my understanding has only ever happened in federal law and in stuff relating to the United States government, not a state government. If you want to show me it happening, or show me a historical record, or a state constitution, or a state criminal statute that references insurrection, then we can talk about that if you want to. What does or interfering with the course of a government proceeding mean, Destiny? Or interfering with the course of the implementation or the execution of some particular federal law? It has to be federal. Yes, because we're talking about the federal government. No, that doesn't mean it. Hey, hang on, hang on. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're doing a classic kind of destiny bait and switch, where you say in this particular case mm, it would, because switch. that's what we're talking about. Okay, that's fair, but that doesn't mean that that's what the definition says. The definition itself does not say that it must be federal. Who, it doesn't say that. With my what hang on, it doesn't to say that anywhere. What does or interfering with the course of a government proceeding mean? What does it mean? That, real quick, guys, that is 10 minutes. Um, what I could do is, because I see that there's a discussion here between federal, you know, if an insurrection could be federal or state, I will go what? ahead and reset the clock. I think Dude. maybe this is something... Every single time he talks, it's just like, well, I can see there's a conversation happening, so I don't want, I don't want to do anything. Okay, then don't do it. Then, then don't do anything. Shut up. Shut up. Stop interrupting. Don't do anything. Why? Do, why are you doing anything at all? Don't do it. Then we you can kind of hold in on. Do it. Can an insurrection be? Uh, we, obviously, we're talking about it from federal level, but can also be at a state level. Do you guys want to shift that conversation there and make this round specifically for that? Are you guys okay with that? It's I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, state insurrection. I'm just not even aware of that even being a thing. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard. Well, of I don't that. know. Destiny, were the DC oh, cops local? I'll put the clock for DC five. cops were federal. No, all of them were federal, eh? The, the District of Columbia is, the, is federal. Yes, so they have federal. no, they have no state police there at all. What state police do they have there? I don't know. I'm just asking. I don't believe so. No, I'm pretty sure even the National Guard there directly, like the chain of command goes up to the president, not a state. Do, governor. States, do states have state governments? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't understand why you couldn't have an insurrection against a state government. DC but is like under directly con uh, under the direct control of the um of the of the federal government. They they, they have like some devolved authority, but all of that is at the um what 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 should what. What should the word be at the at the whim of at the whim of the federal government? Um, <laughs> if the federal government doesn't like what DC is doing, they've done this before. I think with like I think it was a needle exchange program or something, or maybe it was legal weed. It was something to do with drugs. I'm pretty sure they can basically just say, "Nah, fuck you." I know you voted on this issue, but you know we're not gonna <laughs> we're we're gonna withhold funding unless you actually don't implement it. Or yeah, you should you consult the historical record and come with an example next time
don't know why we're saying, but what about a state insurrection? Because I don't know, I'm not even aware of state insurrection is a possibility. I've never heard of that reference before. It's not semantic, it's legal, and it's historical, and that's what the understanding is. No, I'm fine with a semantic distinction. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm actually just trying to make one. So you agree that this, that you gave me a definition that it nowhere includes the word federal, correct? It's, we're talk I also didn't give you a definition that includes the word human, or that includes the words like in this present point of time and not like in the future mm -hmm. or time traveling in the past, or that doesn't include like dimension C138, or that like there's a million other things so that I didn't include. Because, yeah, I don't know what to ask you with anything. Because why would I include the definition of, against the United States when we're talking about an insurrection that happened on federal grounds? It's, because, it's, because, well, because if you because want, I, if you want, I can simply matters. add. Okay, well, in that case, I will simply add uh, on my second part. Aren't you appealing to a state court, for instance? Like, what, are you, what are you talking about here? Appealing to a state court for what? Aren't you appealing to a state court for this definition? Isn't that what you said? Did I get that wrong? I'm, I'm appealing to, right now I'm appealing to federal history. What are, you, what are you talking about? Well, I'm just, I'm asking, where did you get this definition? Let's start with that. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a writer who studied, um, I think it was, I think it was constitutional law specializing in the Fourth Amendment. Uh, his name is uh, Mark Raper, and these are the four qualifications that he basically lists out, and then he goes through a number of historical examples to say as much. There's also a much longer paper written about the, um, things like the, the sweeping power of Section 3, written by, um, I think, Baud and Paulson, who write like a 130 page paper where they go through listing like the historical understanding of insurrection. Uh, if you want, we can dive through any part of the paper, or we dive does through he, part of the Does he or, say in this paper that it's a requirement that this be done at the federal level? Oh my Nobody, god. I don't think anybody talks about state this. insurrections. I don't think you can levy war or engage in insurrection against a state. I'm just not aware of that. I've never heard of that brought up before. Yeah, like, I'm just, like, I'm just like, like when you say treason, if I were to give you a definition of treason, mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't know if you can commit treason against like the state of Iowa. I, I think that's only a federal crime. I have no idea either. That's why I'm asking. I, well, I, I can't say just I can't say for dude, what a fucking worthless discussion, sure, dude. Like, oh my god. There's evidence about that, but I didn't come yeah, to I debate that because it's a debate about federal. Oh my cops and okay was it was right. He is just obfuscating on this one like fucking obscure point that no one no one cares about. Uh, no federal one. Right. Right. Oh, doing an internal critique to try to figure out if this is consistent across the board, your definition. I'm not even saying that there's necessarily anything wrong with it, but what I am saying is that there's something wrong with the fact that it seems to fit rioting far better than it would in insurrection. So if we go over these one at a time, an assemblage would fit a riot. That's what Destiny says. Oh my my God. Had they gone through this like riot, five times already. Well, an assemblage of people for an assemblage of people for a common purpose. An assemblage of people, yes. Mm -hmm. So, like, come for a common purpose, okay? And then two right. is to resist any law. We're interfering with the course of the government proceeding, right? Resisting yeah, a law. Resist, yeah. Resisting a law. That's not just breaking a law, but you're there to, to resist a particular law. The one you really don't like. And then three, you're showing up. Yeah, force we have or there. We have the or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Wouldn't that be even resisting police? Wouldn't that qualify for that? No, a government proceeding would be like the like the um, like the Senate confirming like a, like an officer of the of the executive agency. Well, you, you would have, have to demonstrate that. I don't believe that that's true. I think that you can you can interfere with government proceedings. You mean you would have to demonstrate that? Oh my God, he's he's defining the term within his own definition. Uh, even even absent there being some actual proceeding that you're interfering with, I think. Well, that if you would this like to introduce localized laws, that's fine. And if you would like to introduce your own unique sure. definition of insurrection, you can do, that, I I'm, do that. Because I'm unaware that. in the historical record of anybody suggesting that interfering with police officers is a matter of of insurrection. Is resisting an unconstitutional law, insurrection. Um, pro I mean, I guess you could debate over that. But the re reality is, the Electoral Count Act is constitutional. So you know, and and Eastman himself doesn't even think any. Supreme Court judge would side of him on it being unconstitutional, and I think he said to Greg Jacobs that um that he he didn't think any reasonable person would think it was unconstitutional. So should work and lead to an element of insurrection. Are there laws against writing? I don't know. If, I'm not sure. I know there's laws against like things that happen in writing. I don't know if there's like yeah. a law of writing. Are you are you resisting those laws when you're writing? No, you're not resisting those laws. When no, you're unless you're literally writing no. to say we should make writing legal, or we need to get rid of the prohibition on writing. And that's, wait, why would that be a qualification to resist the laws? Because breaking about locally resisting it being implemented. Um. Maybe locally. What do you mean locally? I mean, you you would still if you're resisting against federal law, then you probably then you probably could be because I mean like they were resisting against federal law being implemented when they broke into the Capitol to delay certification to vote. I don't know. I I don't. Maybe we could think of an example where it would be an insurrection based on resisting federal law being implemented on a local level. I, I don't know. The law and do you acknowledge that breaking the law and resisting the law are not the same well, thing? Well, tell me what the distinction is, so I'm not confused anymore. Breaking the law is when you do something that's illegal and resisting the I law. I mean, like, maybe you could, I don't, maybe you could do it. It would, it would just still be, like, against the federal government. It would just be with, within a state. Like, if, like, if, like, it, like let's say there wasn't a, uh, ca like, the capital is just in Virginia and the events of January 6th happened in Virginia, you would still be committing an insurrection against the federal government. It, it would just be located within Virginia. By saying that this particular I, law shouldn't exist. Yeah, okay, but if you're rioting, how do you go about resisting a law? Well, you could riot for the purpose of overturning a particular law. You might say, yeah, I don't you're like resisting other laws then, right? No, you're not you're not saying that rioting should be made legal. Yeah, but even if you weren't, you would still be resisting laws that were on the books against rioting. Oh my god. You're so if I can't divorce okay, we can just disappear. You think that resisting and breaking law are the same thing? We just we're in an impact. I didn't say that they're the same thing. I said that necessarily, if you're rioting to resist some other external no, I law. did see that clip of Trump saying, um, you know, you won't have to vote anymore. We'll, we'll fix it so good that you won't have to come out and vote anymore. So let's say I do you agree you can engage in writing? No, do you agree you can engage in writing and accept you might get arrested for writing? 
Um, yeah. Then that defeats your entire argument. You can no. engage in writing without resisting the law writing. Understanding yeah, that, 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 actually, actually, that makes my argument. That makes my argument. So the thing is, is that even if I can see that it's true, that you could be, um, you know, writing with the expectation that you get arrested for this X thing, right? You could do this for murder as well. You do this for basically anything. You commit any crime with the expectation that you could be arrested for the crime itself. But that would not say that you're not resisting whatever the current laws were that were on the books about that crime. You're saying that the necessity here is that you are resisting some other thing. Fine. But you're also resisting laws by the very nature of rioting. So I don't know why you would have to have something which is externalized while you yourself are still breaking laws. I don't How think are you resisting the law? How are you resisting laws of writing by writing? What does resist mean to you? So, How so do you assuming, resist? Yeah, yeah. So assuming, I can give you an example of this. Let's assume for a second that people are writing in an abortion clinic because they want abortion overturned. I think. If I'm into t I mean, he did say it himself, but um, it, people, people argue over what its words mean. <laughs> this is the spirit of your argument, right? Yep. So they're also, writing. You can also just have the Ben Shapiro take of, oh, well, I grade Trump on a curve. Obviously, Trump's rhetoric is, is bad, but you know, but you know, he's, he's, Trump is Trump. Why? Why would it? You know, he, he's he's a wacky guy. He's just a wacky dude. Abortion clinic. They they want abortion to be overturned. You would agree with me then that they are pushing against abortion, but they're still breaking laws while they're rioting, right? So they are resisting current laws, even though they're resisting another current law. And I don't think that you would consider that to be an insurrection, even though it could fit all of the criteria of these elements. It's an assemblage, for sure. Uh, you're resisting some other law that you don't like, or you're interfering with the course of a government proceeding. You would say that that fits criteria, too. You would say that this is by force or intimidation, and you would say it's for a public purpose. But that clearly is not an insurrection, Destiny. The, the, the issue is that like abortion is not like a, this isn't a federal law. I could just grant you that we can move to the state example since you seem unable or unwilling to differentiate. Let's assume for a second that it was. Let's assume for a second it was a federal law. Okay, you know what? Actually, we can do that. Let's say yeah. that the federal government passed a law mm -hmm. either allowing or uh, not. Have you seen The Apprentice? No, I haven't. I, I mean, I've probably seen clips of it on Twitter, but no. Allowing no, all, uh, all abortion, okay? The government either allows no, it, uh, everybody can have abortion whenever they want, or nobody can abortion, okay? Let's say that I gather a group of people, and I say, listen, okay? Fuck this abortion law. We're all going to get together, we're going to go protest, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're protesting. The goal of our protest, all right, is we want to we want to get rid of the abortion thing, whether it's passed or, or made illegal, okay? We want to get rid of this law. And we're going to show up with a whole bunch of fucking people, and shit's going to get rowdy, and we're going to, you know, we know what we're doing, okay? It's a day in Capitol Hill that they're going to sign the law, whatever. We march down there, and in the course of protesting, like it becomes a riot, um, and, the, and the riot and everything there was because of that particular law being signed into practice. I would say, yeah, that was an insurrection. You showed up with a group of people, you're resisting the passage of some particular law, you're showing up through force or intimidation, um, and, and you end up exercising that, and then uh, it's for the public purpose of a particular law that impacts everybody in the United States. I would say that is an insurrection, yes. Would you say so it's if, not? So would you say that's not people, an insurrection? Yeah, I would say that it would not be an insurrection, at least by this criteria. That would just seem to me, again, to be a riot. That would seem to fit the criteria again of a riot better than an insurrection. I still can't exactly figure out the delineation point I'm trying to. And now, to Holy be fair shit. to you, it is nebulous. It is nebulous. But times, I'm also not dude. the one who's making the affirmative claim. You are. So you're saying that if a bunch of fucking dope smoking hippies wanted to resist the federal law of being able to smoke marijuana on this federal land, true. and they all yes. showed up and they got stoned. <laughs> Uh, like the the standards for both sides are so incredibly different. Yes, and then they started rioting. That that would be a fucking insurrection. If they went there right, with a common purpose, they were trying to resist the uh, implementation yeah. execution of a particular law. Um, yeah, theoretically could. Well, yeah. no, they're just resisting, right? They're just resisting a the law. They're saying we're here to protest the fact, man, that we can't smoke weed on federal property, man. So they all grab their blunts and they start toking up in protest, That's right? Like, and then they start fighting. Well, I need okay, some stuff. So some stuff. Do you think that? Is that hang on, I just want to make sure you think it could be that, yes. that would yes. be an insurrection. The historical record, it could be yes. Do you have any or, definition of insurrection whatsoever? Do you just don't give you a counter definition? If you're not going to give a counter definition, I can give you the right definition. Doesn't include necessarily a public purpose. I've already of riots that wouldn't fit my definition of insurrection, and I really only need to give one and I automatically win. Um, a riot could very much be in response to a particular sports team winning a game. Boom. That's an example of a riot. It doesn't fit my definition of insurrection. I've differentiated the two, and unless you're gonna give me any kind of valuing definitions, I automatically uh, satisfy that element yeah, of the Yeah, I already did. Then... interfering with the course of a government proceeding in and of itself. I think that the necessity of rioting in and of itself. What if you blockade a federal highway? Wait, the necessity of rioting in and of itself? Wait, what? No, no, hold on. Yeah, wait, 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 to be clear, I just, you do acknowledge, do you acknowledge that I just gave you? Do you acknowledge that I just gave you an example of a riot that wouldn't be an insurrection under my definitions? So I think that that would even be appropriate. I think that you could give me tons of definitions of riots that would not fit this definition of an insurrection, okay. but that would not mean that this definition doesn't fit the definition of riot better than insurrection. You understand? Wait, so if somebody was protesting and it got really violent after a sports game, how would my definition fit that better than insurrection fit that better? What than? if they were blockading a federal highway? Would that be interfering with the course of government proceedings because there's a federal law that says you can't blockade byways on federal highways? I mean, this is the thing. I don't know. This, I don't think that counts as a proceeding. So, you see what I mean? No, this becomes so broad that we can begin to just add all sorts of things and call them insurrections. What is the Do government you, proceeding? So, it becomes broad if I expand the definition of government proceeding to literally breaking any law. Example. So if we're going to be totally good faith here, right, which I've been trying to be this entire debate, mm -hmm. and I think you can see that, if we're going to be really good faith here, do you really believe that if a bunch of hippies showed up to smoke a bunch of dope on federal property, okay, and a few of them got wild and started a fire and kicked some shit, right, and, and I don't know, uh, you know, somebody got beat up with a bat because there was tens of thousands of them who showed up at that protest, do you really believe that that would fit the criteria of what most people think of, including you, as an insurrection? Uh, if, they, if they didn't go there united by, like, a particular public purpose, uh, the public purpose there, was they were going against the federal law. They don't want the federal law. They're resisting that just federal so that we don't law. have to waste more time on this. If you want to stack this enough, all I'm going to end up doing is saying that, like, yes, this would agree, as, uh, I would agree that this would be an insurrection. You have, you're not able to demonstrate. This is why I'm asking you, like, historically, can you give me an example of an event that you don't think I would want to classify as an insurrection? I don't think I need to because if you're just going to give me examples where you're just going to make, you're going to build your more and more, and you're going to be an insurrection, I was like, yeah, I would say that was an insurrection. Nobody in good faith anywhere is going to agree with you that if a b
being what it is and not like actively trying to obstruct some government proceeding the way the J6ers were. So if that is the case, that it's so broad that that will encapsulate that, I'm actually fine leaving the debate there too. Okay, I mean, again, it doesn't really matter what we would consider to be an insurrection. Mm. The only thing that really matters is what the historical record says at the time um, was considered an insurrection. And yeah, well, again, I, don't know. I literally think nobody's prosecuting anybody for it, so. <laughs> it, you don't have to, I, well, you're just retreading. Technically, I think this might be a gishkel. When you keep bringing up arguments that have been rebuked over and over, and over again, I uh, you can keep bringing it up over and over again. But again, do you, we agree that like, we can walk in and see, wow, this person was murdered and go, oh, really? Who was charged with murder? Okay. Or wow, wow, the shirt's right here. We saw the right have who was charged with writing. Oh, yeah, it's like we don't, you don't need a charge of a particular crime, and the barrier or the bar for charging somebody with a particular crime is probably a lot higher than declaring an event a thing itself. It doesn't make any sense to say because somebody hasn't been charged with a particular thing. A it also doesn't make any sense to say that criminal because, charges. It also doesn't make any sense that to say that because they haven't been charged with a particular thing, that means they're guilty of the particular thing. Either not, that's my criteria. Yeah, well, my criteria. Literally never said. I don't understand how Andrew keeps bringing this up. Like it, like Destiny has ever said that. Um, that's obviously a dog shit argument. I've never heard those words come out of his mouth. It's it's not, does yeah, it actually flow with this? My criteria is not because they weren't charged. Then why? Is he so wealthy? Meritocracy tells me he's best for the job. That's why he wasn't instructed. I've never used that as part of my criteria. I don't know why. Yeah, well, hippies everywhere. Don't show up to federal property to protest by smoking weed. If he was bad, why why would his dad give him a small loan? Fire. You're going to get brought up on insurrection charges. Why doesn't Kamala have a town named after ever. That's insane. I don't know why you bring up insurrection charges. No one's talking about a criminal charge or criminal proceeding here. Yeah, criminal charge or criminal proceeding. That would be a charge, right? Yeah, nobody's talking about that here. Nobody's talking about criminal charges here or criminal proceedings here. So you, but you would still consider that an insurrection, right? An insurrection doesn't have to be a criminal matter. I just want to make sure that you would still consider that an insurrection. If all four elements of what I said were met, then yes. All right, fine. Well, then I'll leave the debate there. I'm good with that. So what I'll do. And so we went seven rounds here, uh, and I was just timing and everything else like that. I see that there's obviously a difference of opinion in the definitions, what fits what, etc. So what I'll do is I'll go to closing arguments. Uh, I'll put, are you both okay with three minutes? What the, the fuck f- is the rest of this then? Clock to make your closing argument. Sure. Make it a little bit longer if you guys want, and then we can close it after that. Yeah, whatever you guys want to do, I'm fine. Yes, are you okay with three or do you want more? Uh, three is probably fine. Three minutes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, who wants to go first? Uh, well, I open first, so usually the person who opens closes last. Okay, so uh, Destiny, I'll turn it to you. I'll put three minutes on the clock, and you can put your uh, closing arguments here. And uh, this was a fantastic discussion. Obviously, you know you have a good debate when the chat is like, you know, if almost fifty-fifty. So um, I'll go ahead and turn it to you, Destiny, and you can uh, give us your closing arguments, and then I'll go turn it to Andrew. Yeah, I mean, historically, like there have been examples of things that were considered insurrections that were incredibly small in nature, right? I don't, I don't know if anybody died at all in the Whiskey Rebellion. I'm pretty sure everybody that got arrested for that was like acquitted. Uh, it was just people basically essentially uh, protesting the, the whiskey tax laws. Um, this wasn't a massive deal that had like explosions and gunfire and deaths everywhere. I think that we just don't tend to view things as insurrections as much anymore because we don't tend to have insurrections as much anymore because it's kind of become the new norm uh, as the United States has, you know, traveled through or journeyed through time. Um, I think that. The four elements that I gave, I think were pretty clearly met on January 6th. I think I've demonstrated that we can imagine a ton of events that are riots that wouldn't fit the four uh, elements. I understand that Andrew has a really hard time understanding between resisting the law versus just breaking the law. Just because somebody goes out and they engage in rioting doesn't mean that they are trying to resist the law of rioting, that they're trying to make sure that rioting is legal. That's the goal of that particular riot. Uh, oftentimes, riots can be said to come together to protest other types of things where people feel like the law isn't being executed in a reasonable manner. Um, to say that a bunch of people that show up and end up rioting uh, as a result of a protest that's against, like, uh, say a cop they feel like wasn't fairly prosecuted is the same as a bunch of people showing up to resist the certification of the vote as laid out in the Electoral Count Act. Uh, it's just not at all the same thing. But we can continue to misread the second element of this and understand why. And that's because if you grant the definition or any definition of insurrection, January 6th almost certainly follows from it. And the only way to escape January 6th being labeled as insurrection is to use either a ridiculous um, type of definition that literally nobody historically has ever agreed to. And again, you will never find historical citations people that use these very unique and contrived definitions of insurrection, or you set this uh, bar of evidence as being unbelievably high, uh, which is saying something like Donald Trump needed to say, hey, everybody, we're going to go do an insurrection. And absent that, even if he's telling people to fight like hell, even if he's tweeting the day before, uh, Vice President Pence has the ability to overturn the election, uh, even if he's saying, like, you know, we need to go down and march and fight like hell, take a country, none of these things are going to matter if they don't actually use the word insurrection, which I guess means there's no such thing as an insurrection ever having, uh, having occurred in all of your history. Uh, I would say that if you argue with somebody who doesn't believe in a particular definition of insurrection, ask them, has any insurrection ever occurred ever? Which would you consider insurrection? Um, and then once they start to consider something's insurrection, say, hey, well, what are the elements that make this insurrection? Or even more, you say historically, what have judges and lawmakers considered an insurrection? People like Andrew will never do that. Instead, they'll just play word games all day and try to say, well, riots fit and what about states and all these other things aren't really relevant to defining insurrection, which, how do you define it? January 6th clearly was. All right. Okay. That was uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. I will turn it to you, Andrew, to uh, make your closing arguments. And then, Andrew, from what I understand, you wanted to open up the phone lines, right? And have a discussion with the people. Well, after? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, just, it wouldn't surprise me, but. Destiny has know. other places to go. I'm willing to stick around for call-ins. I've always done that on the Crucible. Sure. Um, sure. And I'm sure, I'm sure well, there's people. Right now, as we speak, um, Bills is um, firing up the phone line, so we'll get that hey, phone number out. <laughs> they just do call ins for like over an hour? Hold on, then what the hell is this video? Not only is none of it true, i shit with an Evan Bourne show. Um, I think that that is... Oh, that's just, so it's just after Andrew leaves. Okay. Screen and you can, you guys can, it does if you want to stay, you can telegraph to your audience so we can answer some questions. Yeah. People, we'll turn it to you, Andrew, to make your uh, closing arguments. Yeah, well, it's really, it's really funny, this appeal to authority. Destiny grabs this entire nebulous definition from some guy that he respects on the internet and then claims that this is some authoritative definition. Some guy he respects on the internet. This is the authoritative definition because I read it from some guy on the internet. Oh, okay, great. Even though the courts themselves not ruled on this and nobody was charged with insurrection, nobody was charged, again, one more time, nobody charged with insurrection, Trump acquitted of inciting an insurrection, which again, nobody was charged with. Talk about nebulous definition. He says, I'm playing word games. Meanwhile, he takes time today, all day, to assemble a four point, uh, you know, kind of, this is my definition, completely based on some other guy
personal definition of what this means. And it clearly fits three of the criteria for writing right off the gate. We only had an issue with two. And then when we apply these, and remember my opening statement. I said in my opening statement, this is going to become very broad, right? There's no way that we're not going to be able to call all sorts of things insurrections. It only became broad because he made it broad because he expanded the definition of official government proceeding to like literally anything the government does at all. That clearly are not insurrections. We come up with the idea of what if a bunch of dope smoking hippies all show up with the united purpose of smoking dope on federal land in order to resist the federal law. And then a couple of them start a fire and one gets beaten up with a baseball bat or something like this. Suddenly that's an insurrection. Clearly nobody would think that that was an insurrection. Clearly nobody would think that that's a completely unreasonable standard, right? But it's the destiny standard. And the reason again, that he had to have such a broad definition, the reason that he needed this and he needed me to come in and give him some definition he could do an internal critique on is because his idea that this was an insurrection is only there specifically to villainize the opposition for the purposes of demonization so that when bad things happen to them, he can call them traitors. That's it. That's the whole game. It's been his whole game now for a while. And this is what got him on Pierce and all these other things, which I recently reviewed was that take. And so in order for him to justify that take, he has to make you a traitor because you don't believe that that was an insurrection that nobody was charged with. Okay, uh, 215. Uh, guys, that oh, was fucking fantastic. Yeah, we're with again. Um, yeah, well, obviously, again. people are going to have different viewpoints on where they go, but that's, I think, the beauty of any discussion like this in debate that, it, you know, a good debate always has people with different viewpoints saying, like, oh, I think this guy did better, I think this guy did better. So, great discussion from both. I am wow. going to open up the right now. So true, Myron. Uh, Thank think... you for the intelligent comedy commentary. A good debate does have people of different viewpoints. The number is yes. going to be Block Talk Mills. Yeah, so, guys, the number is going to be 505 605 97. Welcome to the local radio. Yeah, I still remember, yeah. But yeah. Motherfucker has an actual phone number for this shit. They don't just use a Discord VC or like, what is this for? Is this Zoom or is this like Riverside or some other like program? They can't just drag people in. What so that's the, the phone dude? number, guys, for to call into the show. You can interact with us, uh, whether it's me, Destiny, or Andrew. Now, that's one. To hear. Your show is scheduled to start in 33 seconds. Oh my god. How is he this bad at his job? Just, uh, Andrew, how do you normally run, run this? You, yeah, 505 That's the number to call in, guys. Again, that number. Just who, usually, usually, just whoever calls in, they have a single question. They answer the question, and then move on to the next caller. Maybe like a 30 second, very quick back and forth so you can get to as many callers as possible. Yeah. Usually, that's how I do it. Okay, no, that, that's cool because we're going to. Your show will be live in call. five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Radio. Okay, so guys, the number to call in is 505-605-9740. Again, that number is 505-605-9740. We're manning the phone lines here uh, at Fresh and Fit. So um, if you call in, if you super chat, we'll go ahead and put you at the top of the list. Uh, get you in there faster. Here's your super chat, last four digits of your number. And um, I think we're, we just opened up the lines. Uh, okay, so do we have anyone on now? I know we literally just opened them, but... Uh, yeah, we do. Okay, so as usual, guys, normal rules. If you want to skip the line, super chat the last four digits of your numbers in, and we'll go ahead and get you on the line. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the first caller here. We got 6327, you're up. 6327, you're up. Go ahead, 6327. And I'm going to be hosting a Zoom call after this, guys. Uh, if you don't mind, drop it in on Castle Club after this. Uh, of course. Awesome. At your service, thank you so much for uh, hosting this. And you guys coming in on your day off is very you're kind of you. If, 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 uh, if you want to jump in and talk to my little Hey, you guys ready for me? But, uh, but yeah, go ahead. But we'll do calls for a bit and, uh, and then we'll switch on over to Castle Club. And I appreciate you guys doing that for me if you guys want to come. Thank you, Adrian, if you want to come in. That's awesome. Uh, who's, we got someone on the line, right? Yeah. Okay, brother. Uh, tell us your name, where you're from, and hit us with your question. Uh, my name's Rick from Miami, Florida. The question is for Andrew. Uh, very frustrating on his side to see the debate on his side. So I really do need an answer of what his definition is for an insurrection. Are you asking me my definition? Andrews. I'm yeah, not, I'm not going to give you one. It's not my burden. I feel like that's a cop-out. Okay, that's no, well, then you need to learn how to debate because you're not knowing how to debate doesn't mean that I'm copping out. It's not my position. The affirmative position, the person calling people insurrectionists is not me. Wait, how are we supposed to have a debate on if January 6th was an insurrection? We don't even have a definition of insurrection. Why do I need to have a definition to note that whatever definition that you could come up with would be too broad to apply to this? That's not a logical statement. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that's called. He came in with some facts. He came in with some, some, some points, but you didn't. Okay. Um... Andrew, do you want to respond to him on that? Or? I think we missed like 30 Yeah, I'm sorry. We were, we were having an exchange. I missed the actual question. I, I think his main criticism is he wants to know what your definition of insurrection is. Is that correct, caller? Correct. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not my burden. On, so. on his definition of an insurrection. It's not my burden. Which way to not, to not answer that kind of a definition of question. And he's using the words, it's not my burden, to cop out of that definition question. Okay, well, how is it my burden? Feels an insurrection. So, so let, me ask you, let me ask you a question, caller. Okay. Let's assume for a second I didn't know what murder was. And you were trying to give me the criteria for what murder was. Could I logically give you a criticism for why that actually would fit some, something else that I do know what it is better than the idea of murder? Do you, do you understand that, caller? Yes. Uh, well, then what is your criticism? I think what you're asking me is, it, I think what you're asking me is, is if, if something that you think fits another definition, would you be able to apply to that definition? You could. No, that's not what I'm asking you. You're not providing an actual argument for that. Like, all you're saying is, well, this could fit something else. But you're not saying... No, I'm giving what's called an internal critique. Oh. An internal okay. critique doesn't necessitate an argument. Hold on, this so doesn't make sense. Like, if, an internal criticism. If the debate has to do with whether or not a person was murdered, if that's the debate, was, was John murdered, and the entire debate is just you critiquing another person's definition of murder, but you're unwilling to put forth your own definition of murder, the implication is that you were never prepared to debate the actual topic of the debate, which is if that's not the murder. implication. That doesn't even make any sense. So, Destiny, let me ask you a counter question. My argument but, is that is arguing in bad faith. Okay. That's not, not only is that not arguing in bad faith, it's arguing in the best faith. No, okay, wait, Destiny, Destiny, the, Destiny knew for sure that uh, he had the burden, not me. Let's get the next one. Oh, no, wait, 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 w
you weren't exactly sure what the criteria was. Another person was calling this group of people a murderer, right? You had kind of an idea maybe of what that was. And so you went to them and you said, okay, can you tell me what you mean by murder? And they gave you some other criteria that fit way better with something other than their definition of murder. Why would that be illogical or in any way unreasonable? That's not illogical and that's not unreasonable, but that would, right. maybe, that would only mean that you would be successful if the debate was, is Destiny's definition of insurrection satisfactory insofar as defining January 6th as an insurrection? But that wasn't the debate topic. It wasn't just my definition of insurrection. Yeah, the it debate was. was, okay, wait, so how can, do you, do you agree that the prompt of the debate oh was, is January, was January 6th an insurrection? Yeah, why does that mean that how I How can you answer that? Wait, do you not have to answer yes. the prompt to a debate? Yeah, so I'm not taking that. I'm neutral on it. It could have been. I was willing to. Oh, you have no position? I was willing to concede that it could have been. I said, write my opening in good faith. I'll make concessions based under A, B, and C criteria. If he can make these demonstrations, you never did. Okay, so then just to be clear then, just so we're all. So the, the prompt for the debate was, was January 6th an insurrection? And I came in with a positive and you came in with no position. No, it wasn't no position. It was that it's possible that it was. It's possible right. that it wasn't. That's no position. And I was willing. I was willing so, to hear you. No, it's a neutral, so neutral position. Neutral. That's not no position. No position. Yeah, looking, okay. I'm sorry, is neutral not a position? Not, not really, no. Oh, no, not really. Does that mean no or yes, Destiny? Is neutral a position or isn't it? For the purposes of having a debate, no. Oh, for the purposes of having a debate, you can't have a neutral position. Destiny, somebody hosted Stephen a debate. Third, yep. The best leftist debate on planet yep. Earth, ladies and gentlemen. Neutral on a debate topic yep. is not a position. Not to have as a debater. That's correct. There's a debate saying, debate saying is God real? And one person shows up and says, I, I'm arguing the affirmative. God is real. And the other person says, I think I'm a neutral position on that. Yeah, oh, I guess you've never, guess you never debated with an agnostic before who's neutral. They're not neutral in a debate on, on what that would be a debate oh on agnotism or narcissism. No, not a debate on whether God is real or not real. Why couldn't you why couldn't you go into a debate agnostic about God being real or not real? Destiny, can you explain that real Because definitionally an agnostic doesn't take a position on or doesn't they have knowledge of the existence of God. They don't have a knowledge of God. So why would you debate a Gnostic person or somebody an agnostic person or somebody on narcissism who doesn't have a position on the existence of God? So agnostics can't have a neutral position about whether or not God exists or not. Agnostics don't even Usually when like I hear agnostic does not necessarily mean neutral position on God. Agnostic it means you don't believe that you can prove that God doesn't exist. Usually that's what usually that's what people mean when they say ag, um, agnostic in terms of um, in terms of like it, it being an atheist. Technically an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in God. Well an agnostic is someone who doesn't believe it's possible to know for sure that God exists. Possible to be both an agnostic atheist. Um, doesn't believe, but also doesn't think that we can ever know whether God exists. Like, yeah, usually when people say agnostic, they're like an agnostic atheist. They're, they're not, um, yeah, they're not just like, oh, well, I'm neutral. Well, I'm 50-50 on whether God exists or not. That's usually not, usually not what they mean. Well, no, somebody, a person who's agnostic, you wouldn't listen to the debate on whether or not God is real or not. They would say, oh, well, I can't have information about the existence of God. You go, okay, why well, you wouldn't have this Oh, debate. well, then I guess 50% of the debates on modern day debate are incorrect because people have a neutral position, an agnostic position, like Matt Dillahunty, a guy you talk to about whether or not God is real. Where Matt Dillahunty says, listen, I'm agnostic on it. He could be real. You just haven't demonstrated to me that he's real. Matt Dillahunty's wrong in all those debates, right, Destiny? He would be if that was the prompt of the debate. Yeah, so the prompt of the debate was, is God real or not real? I'm doing the triangle. I'm doing the triangle. You come in and you go, oh, well, I'm agnostic. Then you go, okay, why the fuck are you in this debate? You're not a position on it. Then bring in somebody that feels an atheist who wants to have a strong position, like he's not real, or an atheist who has a strong position, he's real. That makes no sense. You can still have a neutral position. That's that's absurd. I don't know how how the world are you the world's best leftist debater if you don't know you take a neutral position. This is like saying you want to have a debate between two people between who is God or what is God, and one person is Catholic and the other person is an atheist. This is a nonsense position. Everybody knows this. This is like a debate. Oh, everybody knows it. So it's true. Yeah. Just like everybody knows it's an insurrection, even though they can't charge anybody. That's the historical record. It's an insurrection. Okay. Um. So what I'll do here is we'll move to the next caller here. Let's um. Um. You got it up. Five five eight four. You're up. Five five eight four. You're up. All right. Welcome to the show. Five five eight four. You got Myron Gaines, Destiny, and Andrew and Wilson in the house. Hit us with your question, please, quickly, because we got a lot of people on the line. Holy shit. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. You're on air. Can hear me? Yeah. We hear you, man. You're on air. Oh. Oh. So um, I just wanted to ask, do I have to solely debate on this topic alone, or can I just talk about the topics as well? Um, we, you want to keep the topic yeah, specific, please. Time, yeah, because otherwise yeah, people are going to be for every time. Yeah. This is, this is whole thing. I mean, neither of them actually gave a definition. Neither of them gave a definition on the topic at all. Like, definitely, what was your definition of, uh, of insurrection? Uh, an insurrection has four crucial elements. One is that there's an assembly of people for a common purpose. Two is that you're resisting a particular law or you're interfering with the course of government proceeding. Three is that you're doing this by way of force or intimidation. And then four is you're doing it uh, for a public purpose, not like a private one. You're not showing up to like, steal something, or you're not showing up because you're like, uh, upset about like, a house sporting event turned out. It's like a public interest in it. Yeah, caller, he said that at the top of his argument. <laughs> caller, he said that at the top of his argument, dude, and he was referencing the Fourteenth Amendment. You might have missed. No, I'm just saying. No, I agree with him that it wasn't insurrection. But isn't wasn't Andrew's whole point that January 6th was not insurrection? I believe that was his whole point. Well, Andrew doesn't have a point because he doesn't. He rejects my definition of insurrection, and then he appeals to some universal definition of riot, which I'm not even sure he's given. And then he appeals to, well, this is what everybody would think a riot is, and then he appeals to, well, nobody would agree that hippie people engaged mm -hmm. in your definition of insurrection or committing insurrection. So I guess Andrew's just agnostic on the question of whether or not January 6th was an insurrection because he doesn't have a definition of what insurrection is. Okay, but I think we answered his question, Destiny. So we can move on to the next guy. Uh, yeah. All right, right thank thank you for calling in. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next call again, guys. Uh, 515 Shout out to my bills manning the phone lines in the back. Uh, if you super chat in the, the last four digits of your number, FNF uh, superchat.com, uh, we will go ahead and rumble right whatever you want to do. We're live on all the platforms. We will get you to the top of the list. Four last four digits of your number. Who's up next? Four zero eight six. You're up. Four zero eight six. Go ahead. Damn, four, I should have called. Shout out to the production team in the back, man, making this fucking flawless. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, Loki. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome to the show. Yeah, but I got a question for Andrew. Just uh, I'm not I'm not trying to debate. It's just a question. I'm just uh, trying to gauge what you think about this. So, Andrew, uh, if you if there was like a, a leader or whatever per se of the country or whatever, right? Like, and you genuinely thought, like, genuinely wholeheartedly believe that this leader was like an
but that doesn't mean yes or no. I'm John not sure. Right contact what? Service. Okay, so I mean, just take the jump shooting, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so I mean, like, suppo yeah, suppose that guy that did it or whatever legitimately thought that, like, Trump was going to be the next Hitler. Do you think he, like, he was in the, like, like almost a moral right or whatever to try to take him out? No. Okay. Why? <laughs> well, so uh, we're not allowed to, in this nation, assassinate our political opposition. And if you want to know why that would be immoral, it's because that would be murder. But if you want to know why that would be illegal, it's because there's a crime against, you know, uh, killing people. That, that's why it would be illegal. It's, it's crime. You can't kill people. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. So let's just, just to be clear, I don't think assassinations are allowed in any country. Right? <laughs> that's usually not okay. But. Okay, hold on, hold on. I want to add, do you think it's okay to just stop them, to stop them from taking office? Like, just, just like physically force them, prevent them from taking office? Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to follow this. Maybe, maybe it could be, but, but what do you mean? You mean, is it okay to physically stop Trump from taking like office? A bunch of people pulled, like a bunch of people pulled up and just like forcibly, physically, we're saying like, we're not going to allow you to be president because we think you're going to be awful. Do you think it's okay to do yeah, that? Yeah, that, that would be criminal. Yeah, you can't do that, no. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you. No problem, man. Uh, we'll move on to the next caller. Again, 505 uh, Super chat, last word is a number to cut the line. Uh, go ahead, Mo. 3990, 3990, you're up. Go ahead, 3990. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, Andrew, I have a question. Can you find me a chair? Oh, shit. Red Radius. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. What's up, Red Radius viewers? What's up, my fellow lip cucks? <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Uh, We're finishing up the... Destiny Andrew Wilson debate. Oh, I say finishing up. I guess they do the Q and A for like an hour or something, <laughs> which seems a little it seems a little weird. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, do you want? Well, it depends on. This is like the sandwich argument, right? Uh, so, what is a sandwich? What is a chair? This kind of thing. Uh, so, when you look at the essence of a thing, right? It is possible that all definitions could fall short to an essence of a thing, but that doesn't mean we can't recognize the essence of a thing. So, why if we were to take the idea of um, you know a bunch of hippies smoking a fucking blunt in a forest somewhere? Sound like said that to resist federal law, and then they started burning the forest down because uh, you know a couple of them got too rowdy. Calling that I insurrection. I like there no argument against the rowdy the whole time. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, he didn't even like. Um, he literally brought up like the same point like ten times where where he, like at that destiny already addressed. Where it's like, well, just because they were, uh, weren't charged with it doesn't mean it was an insurrection it's like yeah destiny never said just because they weren't charged with insurrection that makes it an insurrection like it was, he was just saying whether or not people are charged with it has no relevance or whether or not it's an insurrection it, like I, I can't believe he brought up that insanely dumb point like four times and then he was also just obfuscating um <laughs> obfuscating the whole time too yeah would fit the spirit of what that means. So while you're looking at both the definition, you're also looking at the application. So when you ask, can I define a chair? Sure. Can I give you a definition of a chair which you can't pick apart? Uh, likely not. But isn't that what you're doing right now? No, it's not what I'm doing right now. Thank you for the follow. Uh, not by a lava. Because there's still an essence to the thing. There's still, there's still something which we're perceiving to the thing, which makes it a chair. The same way it makes it an insurrection. So if it, if it fits a criterion of a riot better, and when we see it as a riot, and everybody sees it as a riot more than they do an insurrection, which is why it was charged that way, it seems like it falls under riot better. Who's charged for a riot? Yeah, well, they're charged under uh, the purview of rioting. I thought they were charged like trespassing and stuff. Yeah, well, trespassing as well. So these That's are not a riot, though. Well, these are going to be tangential laws. Uh, it's a tangential law. What does that mean? So, so if you're, let's say for a second that you're arrested for, um, I don't know, for trespassing, right? Certainly that's not going to fit the definition of an insurrection, right? Is there, <laughs> exactly. wait, is there, a, federal crime? Is there a federal crime for rioting? Well, maybe not, but it would be under purview of what writing is. I don't know what that means, purview of what writing is, when we talk about criminal charges. I don't know what that means. Okay, so, well, you agree with me there is writing. I don't know if writing is a public, or is a federal crime, I'm not sure. Yeah, I know, okay, I get that, but do you agree with me there is writing? I agree that rights exist, yeah. Yeah, and do you agree that you and I could likely agree on what right is? Uh, I don't know, you don't want to give definitions of anything. Well, I mean, if I give you examples, you think we could agree, like, um, if I show BLM footage with a, of their riots, do you think they would agree that those were riots? Well, well no. Andrew seems to think uh, that Destiny's definition of an insurrection is actually the definition of a riot, so... I would ask you for specifically, was anybody charged with a riot? And if they weren't, then I would say that by your earlier definition of insurrection, these must not have been riots. You mean, you mean somebody charged wait, with a riot? Did I give you insurrection? You made it sound like a necessary element of an insurrection having occurred was an individual being charged with a crime of insurrection. You repeated no, this like 20 that never, that never happened. Then why did you bring that up over and over again? Because, well, no, so you're taking, you're conflating two different ideas. So idea one is, nobody was charged with an insurrection, which means the powers that be also, when they saw this under their purview, probably didn't think that it fit the criteria for whatever insurrection is going to be. And so that's, we have to untangle this idea. And then we move on to idea two, which is your definition may fit something else better than it fits actual insurrection. Okay. Then you have to show me for a particular BLM riot that somebody was charged with the crime of rioting. If they weren't well, charged with that, no, they're coming out and say, oh, people probably didn't think it was riot. They just like, don't believe it. I already had, I laid out four necessary elements, the things oh that don't become a riot. Okay, well, I would say that Chaz and Chop was, uh, was like an open rebellion or insurrection. Okay, then I would ask you, I would ask you, no, because I would ask you for a single historical example, um, either judicially, legally, or through um, any kind of like historical so, writing, where so they say where they say that you can engage in an insurrection against a state. I'm not aware of that being possible. I don't think insurrection is a fine for states. But you can show me an example, and I say, okay, fine, then Chaz was an insurrection. Yeah, okay, but. But the definition itself, right? Oh, if so I were, they've walked through this like 10 times. They're talking about the insurrection against the federal government, obviously. define it that way, right? As a, like Chaz Chop, and I'm not, right? But I'm saying I can at least look at that and say, this is something akin to this, of what I would expect to see under the criteria of X, Y, and Z. That's my point. Maybe, but I didn't really get into insurrection, so I'm not sure. I mean, it's a good thing that uh, Andrew doesn't think he can down or ice during the BLM vote of 611 in the pitch, so that's a good takeaway, I guess. But thank you, guys. Stop it. 
All right, so we'll move to the next caller. So guys, I'll just discuss with my team how we'll do it. We'll answer a few more phone calls here. And then what I'll do is we'll stay live on YouTube and all other platforms. As you guys know, obviously, go check out Destiny. Go check out Andrew Wilson and the respective YouTube channels are streaming as well. This is, uh, you know, multi-stream between all the different platforms. They think between all of us, guys, we got like 50,000 plus, uh, around 30, 50,000 watching us. Um, and what I'll do is I'll send oh, a Zoom yeah, link to all the quickly about Castle that. Club members. And we'll answer questions exclusively with the Castle Club members. And I appreciate you guys doing that for me. Uh, but we'll answer a few more phone calls for guys that are just watching the show regularly. But we'll stay on. We'll answer questions from Castle members only. But, uh, but we'll do that a bit after we answer some more here. Um, who's next on the line? We'll try to get through as many of you guys on. One, 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 four, three, you are up. One, one, four, three, you are up. One, one, four, three, you are up. And before we bring him on, uh, Destiny, uh, if you guys want, where he just asked the question, then we just move on. Uh, then take him off the line. You answer the question. Go on. So we get more. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. We're gonna keep watching this, but I'm also gonna open Power World and play it in the background. <laughs> I know, whatever you want to do, it, bro. Okay. Because I know you normally do this on your thing. That, should, that would be better. Is have the quality of the same and disconnect. Otherwise, it's gonna be back and forth the bus forever. Yeah. We'll do that. Then. So I'll uh, call her. Go ahead. Uh, say, say your name. Where you from? Ask a question, and then we'll uh, you know have them respond to your question and move on. Get as many people through. One, one, four, three. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Um, all right. I'll remain on names, um, but I just want to point out that the uh, the particular government proceedings that BLM as a movement was uh, interfering with were the various court cases related to pre police brutality. Um, so, okay, so that's case, uh, BLM meet the criteria of an insurrection. You, you wouldn't, I, I wouldn't define like an entirety of a, like a, a summer of protests or riots or insurrections like a particular insurrection. Yeah, there's that too. You'd have to like do a specific event. Sure. Um, also, I don't think that I'll, I'll, just, I'll, ignore, I'll ignore the federal state distinction. Out. What? One entity. Sure, but like if we look oh, consistently as BLM through the whole summer. Do what? Say it again. And uh, like, I actually don't know if any of the BLM riots were pre planned to be riots or if like all of them were pre-planned to be protests and a lot of them turned into riots because a bunch of like uh, opportunistic people took advantage of all the of the you I mean, know the chaos on the street of the super large protest and I, I don't know if any of them were initially planned to be riots like the same way january 6th where it was very specifically trump was calling the people down there for january on january 6th for a very specific purpose and that purpose kind of required violence <laughs> I mean, if only Andrew brought up any evidence of his claims. Yeah, exactly. Of a certain type of outcome in various no, 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 you don't means. understand. That's not his burden. That's just not his burden. And demanded forcefully with information that the government bend to what they wanted the outcome to be. How does this not make uh, BLM the insurrection? It's, it's you, you, if you can, you might, there, my guess is going to be that if we went through every single, like, BLM riot, that we could probably find some that I would say might meet my definition. If we ignore the state federal distinction, we might find some that meet my definition okay. of insurrection. And that Trump is a bad president because of letting insurrection, then Kamala it's Harris uh, directly uh, provided the yeah, yeah. to insurrection. So we would also make Kamala Harris an insurrection. No, because I don't think any courts reviewed really. any of that behavior and found any of it to be an insurrection, number one. And number two, I don't believe that providing bail money consider, is considered part of any Whoa, 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 whoa. No court has said that this is an insurrection either. That's not true. The Colorado State Supreme Court did. Why, were, why was anybody charged in Destiny with insurrection? Because it wasn't reviewing, because the court wasn't reviewing it for criminal proceedings. It was the Colorado State Supreme Court. They don't have the authority or jurisdiction here. And what the Supreme Court said? The Supreme Court said they didn't really want to deal with it. Right, so they right. So you were just operating off of your definition. Under your definition, he's meeting the criteria for these being insurrections because he's saying that this is now federal. That these are impeding and resisting federal laws at this point. And so if that is no the case, we have to concede. No federal laws. It's just you have to demonstrate that. The federal execution well, of what law? Well, well, wait a second. Weren't they resisting the federal laws of how police are able to deal with suspects and things like this? Were they? Was that what the police reform was? Was a federal law? That's not none of that's federal. I don't think I understand. I mean, that's what the caller um, no, it's not like he was saying uh, they were protesting particular court outcomes. That's a judicial system, not the legislative system. So I understand that government is confusing, but these are two totally different things. Um, I don't know if you've had an insurrection protesting court decisions. I'm not aware of that ever being the case. Uh, if you can engage in insurrection rebellion against a court decision, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. All right. Uh, we will go on to the next caller. Uh, who's that next? And we'll take a few more of these guys, then I'm going to drop a link in Council Club for Council members coming and ask these questions. 7579, you are up. 7579, you are up. Go ahead, brother. Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all hear me? Got you. Hey, uh, I got a question for Destiny, and I think uh, Andrew can take up on afterwards. Uh, so based off of your four points that you gave for what would make an insurrection, uh, technically, none of your points make it necessary for there to be violence. You, you say in point three, uh, force or intimidation, but it doesn't necessarily have to be violence. So based off of that, when any legal protest where you're advocating for a certain uh, political cause or anything like that in a public space, when that also, by your definition, count as an insurrection? No, because I think that the intimidation part is important. The quote that I borrow from here was from Justice Marshall in 1807. He said, quote, most comprehensive definition of letting war against the king or against the United States, which I have seen, requires an assemblage of men ready to act and with an intent to do some treasonable act and armed in warlike manner, or else assembled in such numbers as to supersede the necessity of arms. So I don't think you necessarily have to engage in violence, but I think that having the people there um, with the purpose of like intimidation and being ready to act with violence, I think is, a, is, is easily enough to satisfy all no justice, no, like no justice, no peace. You, you have, have to point to like a, you have to point to a particular thing. That, like, yeah, what, I'll point what, to, what is I'll point to oh, jazz So do you think that if you were to take over a big portion or even a small, tiny portion of a state and consider it to now be neutral from the United States itself, that that becomes a federal matter? Um, I don't know. Is that why was it considered a federal matter? Well, don't you think that that is resisting federal law? If you make the claim we are seceding this area from the United States, how would that not be federal? Were they seceding it from the United States? Or were they seceding it? Or were they seceding it from uh, Washington or whatever? What? Were they seceding from the United States of America, or were they seceding yes. from like a state? They or said a city? that this is so they no longer accept USD. They no longer employ or recognize like interstate travel. If you were to have a succession or a secession, that that would mean you couldn't accept USD anymore. Okay, I don't, why, I don't why, would that, why would that matter? Because well, it seems like if you're going to secede from a country, it feels like part of that would be like establishing your own government, establishing your own like foreign relations. Yeah, but you still, you still have USD, and they did. they did. They were trying to do that. They had their own armed militant group who was there armed, definitely intimidating, refused to allow people to come in and out of the zone. They had they were trying to start their own economy, their own gardens. They had annexed the buildings which were around them. That definitely seems like they're resisting federal law. You're not allowed to secede in the United States. That is uh, that's a big no-no. I don't I don't remember this being. Can you tell me what statements or what they made? I, I don't know the details of this. What did they make? Or what statements did they make about federal secession? Yeah, so Chas Chop, they considered it the neutral zone. There was multiple stat
despite the fact that people were hanging signs saying hang my pants and Trump but I can ask you but you say that you say such an inference is fine I didn't say the inference is fine because the relationship statements Donald Trump made so like the people there for a given purpose they actually managed to succeed in doing it makes perfect sense like a laid before I can make the point doesn't help your point no it actually doesn't make any sense because your claim is that you can read into the hearts and minds of these people based on what you perceive their actions to be it's like okay fair enough so if the people who are there are doing the exact same thing they're saying okay this is now a neutral zone we're seceding from the United States of America why can't we read that into their actions as well that's the name I would I would absolutely do that if I don't know any statement like that and you can't name a single one so I don't know where I'm supposed to I don't know how I can work I if you're like full I don't know where it is specific to this case but like if you're full on seceding from the US that could very well be an insurrection um Again, they, I mean, there might be some state federal distinction that you would have to make, but I, I would assume, I don't know if there's a federal law against succession itself. It, it's just something that you can't, you can't do. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it's a federal. It's probably well, unconstitutional. Have if there was such a state, let's just assume that there was for a second. Would you then consider that it? to be an insurrection? If they said that we are going to secede from the United States of America and they have like some organized violent wave and all the other elements around there, say, yeah, this becomes an insurrection. Easily, sure, easily, of course. Gotcha. But you wouldn't say the same for January 6th, so because you're going to give me the definition of insurrection, but that's the difference between good faith and bad faith, by the way. No, 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 that's, that's not a bad faith for me to do an internal critique in your definition. And when I can t at least take your definition and say, wait a second, all these apply to a different category. Yeah, but you're established taking, very well. You're critiquing my definition without even having a definition of your I don't own. need to have a definition. You critique yours. That's absurd. You you, no, that's illogical. The debate, the debate, stop using illogical. It doesn't mean anything. You're, you're using the word, okay? The debate, was whether or not, the debate was over whether or not January 6th was an insurrection. If you only uh -huh. came to that debate to critique my position, and I, I shouldn't be like, you said earlier that you're neutral on it. You're not neutral on it. The, the answer for you is, is you can't compute the questions undefined. You don't have a neutral position. If you don't have a definition of you can't possibly take it. It's like dividing by zero. The answer is not neutral nothing. You just have an undefined position. I don't even have a definition of a term. Yeah, I know you hate this. That is true. I don't Logical. Yeah. That's actually an illogical statement to say mm -hmm. that I would need to have a definition okay. of anything to critique your definition of it. If I have something else that I can make a comparison to that fits with better, that you agree it fits better in. <laughs> okay, I know why you don't get that. Okay, what would your position be on if I were to ask you? It's January 6th. Who do we know? I would get one too, Rhetoric. What's your answer to that? It's January 6th. Did you just go blue, blue, blue? Yeah, if it's honestly, it was January 6th. What's your answer to that? Would you say you're neutral on that? Why, that would be incoherent. Would thank you. I thank you. I agree. Yes. Insurrection. That term is incoherent to you because you have no definition of the word. So I'm uttering, the, I'm uttering nothing to you. When I say insurrection, you have no way to compute the question. So you can't say you're neutral on it. The same way you can't say you're neutral on it. Being you can't say oh, you're neutral on it. You, no, you have no, you have no oh, definition of insurrection. Language works then when you say okay, this, this is a Snicker bar, and I don't know what a Snicker bar is, but I can't make comparisons to other things so that I can at least understand where you're coming from with what a Snicker bar is. Okay, Destiny. That's correct. That is correct. Yeah, that's, that's, a bar. Like, that's not a Snicker bar. That looks like a chocolate wafery thing with caramel on it. Yeah, that's a Snicker bar. 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 Okay, we can move to the next caller. Uh, I'll take a few more of these that were uh, uh, Castle Club guys. I'm going to send you guys a link in Castle Club. We can join in and uh, be the people that ask these guys questions. And uh, it'll be good. Don't worry, we won't have your face on camera because we're streaming on all the platforms. So we're going to protect your identity. If you want to be on camera, maybe we'll do that. But in general, you'll just have your voice play. Who's up next? And whoever's 7983, I see you donated, but you're not in the phone line. So, okay. Okay, 7983, get in there. Uh, who's up next behind him? 1753, you're up. 1753, you're on air with Destiny Myron and Andrew. Go ahead. <laughs> 1753. There you go. What's up, yes, brother? How are you guys doing? Good, man. What's your so, question for the panel? Question. Quick, quick question. It's, uh, it's tangentially related, but um, uh, Andrew, why do you think Trump didn't call anybody uh, during the riot? Like, there were three hours. Cops had their shit kicked out of them. He didn't call anybody except for his lawyer and stuff. But like, like Nancy Pelosi, that's usually the defense. Uh, she was the high queen of all capital security. Why didn't Trump call Nancy Pelosi? It's not within. This is not within the purview of the. This is not within the purview of the debate. I don't care about your diatribe. I don't care about your emotional state. This is not within the purview of the debate. All right. Next up, eight four three eight. You are up. Eight four three eight. You are up. How you doing, guys? Good, brother. I appreciate that. I have a quick question for Destiny. Um, it's kind of like at the end of the debate, toward the end, he conceded to Andrew's example of the hippie rebellion and hippie insurrection. Um, if that's the case, then wouldn't you also have to say that the, um, the uh, inauguration for Trump in 2017, the overturning of Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court, and the... Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Nobody said anything? Yeah, we're, we're just listening, Colin. Yeah, just listening to you, bro. Go ahead. Like, wouldn't you have to say that those two events, and then, of course, you have the White House bombing after the George Floyd death with Trump and everything. Uh, wouldn't you have to say that those would fall within the same definition as well? I would have to go through the facts of each of these, but if you can show me that there was an assembly of people united for a common purpose, that they were there to contravene some type of federal law, um, that the resistance's goal was to make use of force or intimidation, and that they were there for something that was like in the public interest, then whatever you're going to give me here, I'm going to say, well, yeah, there's my definition of insurrection. I'm going to say these were probably insurrection, sure. All right, thanks. Also, wait, hold on. Real quick, not only would I say that, you should say that too. Let's say, for instance, let's say that when Roe v. Wade changed or whatever, let's say the federal government was going to do a particular thing, they were gathering to, let's just say they were doing a ban on it. Let's say that you had, uh, let's say that Kamala Harris was marching with these people, chanting and cheering them on, and saying, like, we're going to stop the government from banning abortion, okay? They're going to sign this law today, we're not going to let them do it, we're going to make our voice here, we're going to go
True, true, true. Right, we'll move on to the next call. And guys, just so you know, we're going to drop the Castle Club link. Uh, sorry, the Zoom call link in Castle Club right now. So get in there and then raise your hand in the Zoom call. And we're going to call that an insurrection if it happens. We're going to drop the link right now. Guys, go ahead and join Castle Club TV. They will never say that for J6. And we'll take a few more callers while we get that set up on our Zoom site. Dude, there are conservatives. 4849. There are conservatives. Unironically, I think unironically, it's hard to tell, calling the Palestine protests right now in um in, in dc a insurrection i like i i can't tell if they're being ironic or not because like they could maybe just be making fun of the left but like I, i've seen tweets like um from, i think benny johnson who is like a relatively mainstream conservative dude oh shit i'm fucked tweet out this is what an actual insurrection looks like just because they were like burning the flag and he doesn't like that okay 449 no, 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 destiny myron and andrew what is your question uh, hey can you, can you hear me? yes welcome to the show all right, oh, cool. Uh, so we were, this whole debate was over a definition of, is, was this event a thing of insurrection? So if you were to pick something like, we'll say there's a shape, and we were going to debate whether the shape was a square or not. Um, Andrew's argument seems to be that, oh, well, that, that maybe fits the definition of a rhombus or a parallelogram better, and that the, basically, those definitions are mutually exclusive. I think that a lot of people would agree that the January 6th event does fall under the definition of a riot, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it also wasn't an insurrection. So if you say, oh, hey, the shape, well, it has four sides, and each four sides, each of the four sides is parallel, and say, well, oh, well, that's, that's a rhombus, or that's a parallelogram, that's not actually a square, then, like, okay, but you haven't said what a square is, and Destiny has put forth not just a personal definition, but the legal definition that's agreed onto by lots of courts, and that's how we do lies. You know, we, we use court opinions to figure out whether this is a, like, falls under the courts, like the federal definition of what everybody agrees that is. And so the saying, oh, well, I don't have to define what a square is, if it's a, my definition of a rhombus, fine, then I, see. I, don't, I don't see what we're, what we're, what we're arguing, because it seems like Andrew... Oh, well, they're gone. It's broken. That so you, you, cut, you cut out, caller. But you don't like to bro, bro, hang on, hang on. You, you cut out. Okay, I, me and Destiny both missed, like, uh, maybe 15 seconds there. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you know where, where was it? Um, I'm just saying that the definition of right and interaction is not mutually exclusive. And so that just because he says that, oh, this fits my person, personal definition of right does not necessarily mean that it's also not an interaction. And the fact that they were trying to prevent some function of the government from happening, some law from being um, followed or carried out by the U.S. government, that, that's, the, that's the defining factor. That's the thing that makes it an interaction. And we can say that it was right. Cool. But it was also an interaction. Okay. Anything else? Oh, would you would you that, say that's so you can't say that? That's stealing. You need to have some sort of way of saying this is not an insurrection, other than saying this is right. No, because yeah, we've been an there, internal so, critique. No, I'm saying that doesn't mean it wasn't made. Why isn't? Yeah, but it's not. It's not. So, so I don't think you understand. What the, I don't think you understand what the burden of proof is. Okay, uh, I never have to tell you why the thing that I don't. I don't, I don't dude, if you're just gonna cut me off and not let me answer, then we're not gonna have a productive okay, conversation. Go ahead. Let me make this point. Go ahead. Okay. Who's the burden of proof on here? On all of us. No, it's not. Who's the burden of proof on? Well, if the burden of proof to say that it's not an insurrection is on the person who's making no, it. No, it's not my burden to say it's not. It's not my burden to say that it is. No the burden, the burden of proof is on the person who makes the claim, not for me to negate said claim, but for them to prove it. That's the distinction. Do you understand that? You say you have no claim that it's not an You're insurrection. Not, no, no, no. Answer my question. Do well, I need to negate a claim for you to be able to prove it? Him? Can't you prove a claim? Well, if you're, if you're... Answer my question, dude. It categorically does not fit the term. Yeah, I know. You're not answering the question, right? Okay. All right. All right. Sorry, you say, bro. I know you don't want to answer it. It's fine. So. All right. Uh, we'll go to the next caller. And uh, just, yeah, just a real quick thing. So, like, the, the, the prompt was, was January 6th an insurrection. Debating my definition of insurrection doesn't satisfy the prompt. It only satisfies attacking my position. But even if you did manage to completely defeat my position, not by actually showing, because you're not even really defeating my position, you're just making my position incoherent. But by doing so, you're also admitting that your position is incoherent as well. Right? If you can prove that I don't have a good definition for you, remember the, if you can yeah. prove that I don't have a good definition for insurrection, you can prove that my position is incoherent. Right? So, so you're saying it is an insurrection. It's incoherent. I'm not using the word. So, do you remember in the beginning of the debate where I gave you the criteria for the concessions that I would make if you're willing to concede on XYZ point? Uh, yeah, but, that, but we're not here to just argue. Does Destiny have a... But if I have a negation, but if, 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 if I have a negation, but we end up on neutral because uh, your definition is incoherent, then you remember when I said in my opening statement that the goal of that was to show that you no longer have the moral high ground because everything's a fucking insurrection at that point, and that means you're as much of an insurrectionist as the people you're accusing of well, being insurrectionists. So that's that's clear, that wouldn't be everything problem. an insurrection. That would just make all riots an insurrection. Yeah, I was being hyperbolic. Okay, well, that's not why we're also being illogical. Um, but yeah, the idea is illogical. that um, yeah, all you're doing is reducing us to the same position, which seems odd at the end of the day. Yeah, but yeah, that's not the goal of the debate. It's always to show that I'm neutral on whether January 6th was an insurrection. You know, you're not really neutral. If you're neutral, if you're neutral on whether or not January 6th is an insurrection, your claim is voided. But then so would yours be, unless your claim is... What claim am I making? Well, claim is if, you're, you're a challenger, if you're a challenger, if I, say, if I say that January 6th is an insurrection, you want to challenge that position, generally the challenge would be that January 6th wasn't an insurrection. Yeah, not that, not that January 6th not that January 6th doesn't comport with Destiny's definition of insurrection, or I think Destiny's, Destiny's definition of insurrection is incoherent. That's a different kind of debate. Well, no, I don't, I don't think it's a different kind of debate in saying loaded things like, well, generally this means doesn't mean anything. So ultimately, if I, well, can, reduce, if I, can, reduce this, if I can reduce this to a neutral position, then your claim that this was an insurrection is false. Okay, then your claim that it wasn't an insurrection is also false. I never made such a claim. What is your claim? <laughs> your claim is just that you're neutral, you have no position on it? My claim was that I could be swayed either way. That well, you but that's not what the debate was here to sway you. Well, you can't be convinced because you can't even accept the definition of insurrection. That's not true. Well, I can't be convinced, and you're just saying you can't be convinced doesn't mean anything again. So are you unconvinced by historical courts that have convicted people or use these definitions of insurrection in order to in order to write legislation or in order to write constitutional amendments? Yes, what do you think they're trying to write? What do you think the framers of Section 3 of the when they said insurrection? What do you think? I think they're tying it to rebellion. Why? But they very clearly every time every time I saw it, it seemed to coexist with rebellion. Every single time I see this, it seems like it's a lead towards rebellion. 
If you agree that it, um, if you agree that it meant rebellion, why would there be so many people that um, draw distinctions between insurrection and rebellion? Yeah, until it comes to charging time. When it comes to charging time, it seems that if they can't draw. Why, hold on, why do you just because you're charges, criminal court, and calling well, them? Well, if, if you're going to appeal to authorities here based around legal, legal definitions, it's perfectly acceptable for me to appeal to the legal authorities, which are refusing to charge under this criteria, Destiny. They're refusing to charge under this criteria for insurrection, and it seems every definition that I can find for this is somehow vaguely associated with rebellion. Uh, yeah, it's associated with it because I believe in every rebellion started with an insurrection, but that doesn't mean that every rebellion is an insurrection. Yeah, That's why perhaps, they use rebellion or insurrection, for yeah, instance, in section 2 of the Second Confiscation Act. You can't give me historical things. Though, right? So, for instance, they say in any rebellion or insurrection, uh, inciting and put on assisting or engaging in any rebellion or insurrection, which is out in section 2 of the Second Confiscation, confiscation Act, um, they're not, they're, they're two different things. The reason that I think that the court, the Supreme Court especially, didn't want to hear this is because they would end up like you giving a definition which was so broad that it would encompass all sorts of things that we don't really perceive of as being insurrections. Because we really associate oh, insurrection wait. and rebellion with the same kind of idea. Which is exactly why I don't believe for a second, while you're over there saying your good faith, that you believe for a second that a bunch of dope smoking hippies to, you know, kind of resist federal law, went and smoked a bunch of joints on a federal property, and a couple of them got rowdy, you would believe that that was an insurrection. I believe you. I if a bunch of people smoking weed went to some fire forest in the United rally. States of America on federal property because they were trying to get them to overturn. No, a couple of them did. They started a small fire, let's say, right? Not, not a huge blazing forest fire. They started a small fire. There was a little bit of rioting there, right? Somebody got beat up. A couple of them had uh, maybe some melee weapons. I don't think we would associate that with rebellion, and so I don't think we would associate that with insurrection. Why, why, I think we associate with rebellion. I'm sorry, because I don't know the why, language. Why is he not drawing a difference between? Does he, does he not think there's any difference between a rebellion and insurrection? <laughs> what, what if you just argue J6 was a rebellion at that point? You might be able to do that. Usually we think a rebellion is more severe than an insurrection. I don't know if I would have a good de definition of a rebellion prepared. Um, but it's, I mean, maybe, I mean, you could do that, right? <laughs> what if you, what if, what if you just said my definition of a rebellion is the exact four points that doesn't lay out as an insurrection. I, I, like, I guess he'd just say, well, that would make all riots rebellion, so it would be dumb. As well as you do. When you say people probably wouldn't do that, what kind of argument are we making there? When you say that like people probably wouldn't think that's an insurrection, what, what kind of logical appeal are we making to challenge my definition? But people probably wouldn't think. Okay, yeah, so, so, what, so, what, what, so yeah, what structure are we going on? So, well, again, we're going to untangle two different ideas. So, I already gave you the critique of your definition. When you ask me what you, Andrew, what do you associate with this thing, which is your direct question, what what types of things do you associate with this? I tell you. Then I say, if that's the type of thing that I associate with it, I also think most people associate that type of thing with it as well. So, these are two different. I don't care ideas. about most people. I'm looking at the legal and historical understanding <coughs> of it, right? So, in any war prize case, the Supreme Court said insurrection against the government may or may not culminate in an organized rebellion, but a civil war always begins by insurrection against the lawful authority of the government. A rebellion well, a civil war was the, did, not, did not begin. The civil war didn't begin with an no, insurrection. No, civil war did not begin because of J6. That it says insurrection against the government may or yes, may not yes, culminate yes, in a yes, rebellion. That's correct. So, so there was an insurrection against the government. It didn't culminate in a rebellion, but those yes, are different yes, things. Yes, and I can show you Supreme Court cases. Sure, sure, so your idea here, well, they're totally the same. Really seem... Unfortunately, it's too nebulous here for us to associate this specifically with only the idea of insurrection when there's other ideas that fit it better. Is there a single historical scholar, Supreme Court case, uh, writer or framer or lawmaker ever that you can cite to that says that there is a nebulous, there's no understanding of what insurrection is? Well, actually, yes. So the Supreme Court justices themselves have stated this. I do have a quote from oh one of the Supreme Court justices who said, This is not an easy thing to tackle because the idea of it is contested and somewhat nebulous. I believe that was Justice, I'm paraphrasing, but I believe that was Justice Roberts who said that. And what was the full quote here? I have to pull the quote up, so I'm paraphrasing, right? But it was something akin to this idea is actually it's a hard associative idea. This was from, from Roberts himself. The Supreme Court clearly did not want to weigh in on this because they were afraid of making a definition like your own, which would be so broad. Are you disputing this? Let's start with this. Are you disputing that you think the Supreme Court didn't weigh in on this because they were afraid that they could make a definition of this, which was so broad that things would fall into the category of insurrection that they really didn't want to fall into that category? I don't think the Supreme Court made a strong statement about insurrection. Yeah, what do you think though? I'm asking you what you actually think. I, they didn't they didn't really rule on the insurrection part. I know they didn't rule on it, but why do you think they really didn't want to hear it? Why do you think it is that this is kind of such a hard they concept? Did, there's uh, for, a reason that court ruling was a 9-0 ruling, right? Because they wanted to <laughs> inspire unity um they they just really didn't want to deal with it that that's the reason they did not they didn't want to deal with it they they were scared they didn't want to deal with it at all <laughs> to kind of get their minds around it's because it is somewhat nebulous it is associated with rebellion and yes there's precedence for these things but the precedence don't directly apply to what j6 was it doesn't matter things, the issue was other, the issue, hang on man let me finish my okay. point and then you can respond mm -hmm. other things do seem to associate with it better that's the point your definition is far too broad you knew it would be far too broad the supreme court also knows this. that's why the supreme court themselves i think really didn't want to go in and rule on it because it would retroactively make a bunch of democrats and republicans insurrection is based on other things that they have done that's great and that's a bunch of reading into that supreme court decision that they had never said but i'm pretty sure that the rationale they gave in the issue was that different minds could disagree on whether or not insurrection had taken place and the idea that different uh, states no, make decisions about it um, yeah. seemed to be very difficult for them so in okay, it's so it's nebulous it's a little bit nebulous they can't really agree because it's not a nebulous concept right do you think that murder is a nebulous concept i think that justification for murder can be very nebulous. Do you think that murder is a nebulous concept? Why are you rambling? No, let me ask you a question. Do you think murder is a nebulous concept? I'm trying to answer the question. Do you think murder is a nebulous concept? I'm trying to answer the question. Whenever you're ready, let me answer. All right, go repeat it when you're done rambling. But okay, well, I'm not going to ramble. I'm going to give you an actual direct answer. Certain aspects of murder, when it comes to justification, can be very nebulous. Yes, like like to retreat laws can be very nebulous. Yes, that can constitute murder. Can be very nebulous. We have some concepts of it, but it's not it's not really something which is easily graspable. Yes, it can be very nebulous. Yes, yes. And yet we still have criminal convictions for murder. That's true. We do still have criminal convictions for murder, which does not demonstrate your point at all. It absolutely does. If a court is capable of determining whether or not a person can have a severe conviction, that's right. What they determine? They determine that none of them committed insurrection. That's what they determine. That's not what they determine. What they determine is what they determine. Really? Where in the Supreme Court they charge you? What they charge you with? No one is being charged. The Supreme Court is not a first review. We're talking about the Supreme Court. I don't know what you're talking about then. No one is.
skill, whatever, because there's no concept of how law or courts or anything works in the United uh -huh. States. The 14th Amendment has absolutely nothing to do with somebody being charged with criminal conviction of insurrection. Criminal conviction of insurrection has nothing to do with any of this. And the question for the court in Trump v. Anderson wasn't whether or not somebody had engaged in the crime of insurrection. And the big issue that they cited to for why they rejected that case was because Section 5 of the 14th Amendment said that Congress can pass laws in order to implement something and they interpreted those meaning Secretary could be implemented via the Section 5 power of Congress. And that's why they do that case. They didn't make a ruling. It's not a big switch. It's a big understanding. It's a big switch. All I was saying, all I was saying was that you said, well, it's nebulous. Therefore, a court can't decide that question. Courts deal with nebulous things literally all of the time. The idea that a court can't deal with something that's nebulous like insurrection, courts deal with things like murder or affirmative defenses like something else, is a ridiculous claim. It's just a fundamental sort of thing. Yeah, except that wasn't my claim. So here's the great kind of destiny bait and switch, right? He just did a typical bait and switch. What he did was he said this. He said, Andrew, do you think that a court can do A, B, and C, or they can in some way rule or adjudicate even with a nebulous concept? My answer was yes. I think that even with a nebulous concept, they can. In this case, right, even if we were to grant Destiny's argument that they can't do this under nebulous concepts, they still didn't charge these people with insurrection even if that's a nebulous concept. What he did instead was he did a bait and switch and said, oh, but he doesn't understand the law. Blah, 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 blah. This was a lead-in question. Do you think something need to be charged with insurrection to be charged with insurrection? Well, let me finish my point. I'd just let you go through your whole diatribe. So I went, it's not a case of Gallup. You don't even know what a case of Gallup is. I just let you go through your whole diatribe. I just let you go through your whole diatribe. Because you asked me, why do you think the Supreme Court acts? And so I just gave you my opinion. I think possibly it's because this is a nebulous concept. They didn't want to weigh in. It seems that Roberts agreed when you read initially what Roberts said. It seems like that's what he's saying there is that there's going to be a lot of disagreement here because we can't quite agree on this. That sounds nebulous to me. All right. How about this? We'll take one more caller and then we'll go to the Council Club, guys. Let's get that guy on the line. Yes. Go ahead. 0789. 0789. Go ahead. Hit the line. And then after him, I actually do have a potential topic of discussion for the panel. Uh, but let's get this caller on first. Go ahead. Uh, 0789. You're up. 0789. You're up. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. What's up, brother? Awesome. Great. Uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, big fan, Absolute Cinema. Um, I have a question for uh, Mr. Borelli. Um, if. Uh, I knew what sexual assault was, but I had no fucking clue what rape was. Could you ever prove to me no. that rape took place? Because I no, because whatever definition you give, whatever definition I give, rape, you're just gonna say it was sexual right? assault. Yeah, no, true. Yeah, if, if you didn't, if you had no idea what rape was, but you knew well what sexual assault was, then any single time I tried to define what I think rape has occurred, you would just say no, I think this was sexual assault. You never give a definition of rape, and then you would just use that to try to win the argument. Yeah. <laughs> I think you left. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and start switching on over to the council club members. I have a couple of these hands, and I do have something that I was gonna bring up to the panel. Uh, who's the first person on bills? All right, we're gonna go ahead. And just for the guys on Castle that are waiting, we're not gonna put you on camera because we're live on YouTube and all the platforms. So I want to protect your guys' identities. Um, but we'll go ahead and get the first person in that had a uh, had something. Bills. Do we have I like how they keep saying that when they're like, aren't they? Aren't they using phone numbers? I, like they're doing like an actual like cellular phone call. They're not like doing um, <laughs> they're not doing anything that's capable of doing video. Oh fuck, I forgot. I need to build. Shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, Castle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, 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 not for the stream. Damn. Uh, <laughs> just confirming, bro. Uh, yeah, no, no. I meant as in, like, it's fine. Uh, go, go ahead. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> it's fine. We'll get these because they're still live on their platforms. So it's cool. Okay. It's whatever. Yeah, Chief Rocket, go ahead, bro. Chief Rocket. Going once. Going twice. Yeah. Damn, guys. I didn't want to get off YouTube. Fuck, guys. Come on, man. It's fine. Who's up next? Hey, Myron, if you're, yeah. gonna, if you're gonna move this over to um to the Castle Club, uh, let me uh, let me kill the stream on this end, and then keep it up. you keep it up. That was our intention to kill our stream on our end. Okay, do that. Yeah, just uh, just an error. But you guys keep your stuff going on. That's cool. I'm just where the Castle members can ask questions. Go ahead. Hey, so right. question for Anthony. Would you say that this is? Would you say this is an organized attempt by a group of people to defeat their government and take control of their country, usually by violence? No, I don't think for insurrection. I think that maybe back to, to rebellion, but for insurrection, it doesn't have to be an attempt to control the entire government. It could just be contravening a certain procedure, official proceeding, um, or to resist the implementation of a particular law, which is like the execution of the law. So not a violent attempt to take control of the government. Violence or intimidation of violence is a necessary element, yes, but not to control the entire government. Well, three out of four dictionaries define it as taking control of the government, and then there's a looser definition that is just an act of revolting against civil authority or established government. But that's just a loose definition. That's fine, but we have a Supreme Court and we have a legislative history that I would refer to in this country before looking at how a dictionary would define a particular thing. Um, but I don't think that any time you engage in statutory construction or legal review of a particular thing, you just open the dictionary and read the dictionary definition. Yeah, but the, the definitions come from a general understanding, and since there was nothing legally pursued, then I don't think the legal definition applies here. The more it's, think, it's just a definition of what we understand something to be. That's but why I'm bringing this up. Well, if, even if you wanted to appeal to a dictionary definition, you'd be appealing to dictionary definitions at the time that insurrection was enshrined in constitutional uh, amendment. That's what you'd be looking for. And number two, there were things that were declared insurrections, and there were people that were forgiven of like crimes of insurrection, so there is a legislative and there is a judicial history of understanding what that is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, real quick, uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to end stream on our end. You guys stay like you are. We're going to continue running the show because you guys are live. We're going to come back on YouTube because we did not mean to end our stream on YouTube and Rumble. So, we're going to restart it back up. Castle members, you guys are still going to get your questions answered. We're still running everything. We're just going to end stream on our end. But we're still going to live on YouTube and everything else like that. So, that's really so bad stuff at on the job. Back but um, let's get the next person on Castle Club. Um, I apologize about that, guys. I did not mean to end our YouTube stream at all. Right. Horrible. That was a mistake that we made on our side. Uh, so, okay. Uh, who's the next person on Castle Club? Let's get them on. Or even before we can go back to full lines if we need to. Yeah, no, no, no. We got, we got Castle Club. We got Castle Club. All right. Yeah. Let's ask Go, who's the next? Oh, wait, here's yeah, the next one. Oh, okay. right, real quick, I have a question for you. Do you support the imprisonment of Americans without trial? Um, depends on what you mean by imprisonment. Like, police officers are allowed to arrest you and hold you while you're pending a trial date. I think there's like a 60 or 90 days or something is your uh, constitutional right or whatever. I think that might vary from, from like state to state. But in general, so, no, I'm opposed to people being held without trial. But there's also like the Patriot Act stuff as well. So I mean, it depends on the circumstance. All right, let's do enough. I mean, in general, no, I don't think people should be held without trial in general. I think that's probably not good. But I know there are specific circumstances
political fight. Um, yeah, but type of political fight, I guess. That's pretty. Okay, they're, they're fighting for their rights, right? I guess, sure. Yeah, you can protest things, yeah. Okay, so if a fight doesn't necessarily need to be violent, why then do you attribute Trump's words prior to January 6th as calling for violence when he didn't directly incite violence in his language? I don't know if he directly incited violence. I think that's a fundamentally different question. I think that Donald Trump called people there on January 6th to protest the certification of the vote um, because he led everybody to believe that that certification could be stopped either with Pence or with enough uh, force supply, I guess. And as the insurrection was ongoing, Donald Trump was making calls to lawmakers to try to continue to encourage them to delay the certification of the vote. So it seems like there was a, there was a plan in mind the entire time. It was even more extensive than that. But yeah, he was hoping that there'd be a lot of pressure. That's why he called people there on January 6th. That's why he, even when he knew they had guns and stuff, he sent them to the Capitol to go and protest. That's why he said over and over again, stop the steel fight like I'll take our country back. And that's why when violence started and he watched violence happening on TV and he heard that actually would have been shot, instead of like trying to call people off from being violent, he tried to take advantage of the violence in order to further his scheme of having the vote not certified. So all that's but, but, yeah. Pick, pick it up to what uh, Andrew had said, similar to that, you know, he, he didn't, uh, like I said, he didn't incite them to violence, right? He, he was calling to fight, yes, fight for the election that he believes he was robbed from. That doesn't necessarily mean that he was wanting a violent outcome. And Andrew had pointed out that when the events did escalate to a violent nature, he did tweet to be peaceful. So to that point, Trump's motivation in the events Only of that day after three hours isn't again, in line but... with the insurrection. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to do an insurrection. He was just wanting a protest. So, so here's like, yeah, so there's two different, different ways to look into that. Is a different point. Yeah, there's two different ways to look at this. I think this is a very simple analysis. I can't believe that there is. Uh, I don't think reasonable minds disagree here. But if we were looking at a man who wanted a peaceful protest, and you were to look at a man who didn't want a peaceful protest, who wanted an insurrection, Donald Trump takes every single action of the man who wanted an insurrection, but didn't obviously want to be like legally charged for it by saying, "Go be violent." Right? right? He right, called the debate there on a particular day. He was already enacting a plot both in the background and publicly to pressure Pence to toss out the vote. He was encouraging people to protest on the day, saying, "Stop the seal," leading people to believe over months that the election had been stolen. And when violence broke out on the Capitol grounds, even after Babbitt was killed, he was making phone calls to legislatures to have them stall the electoral vote. These are the actions of a man who wanted violence, saw violence happening, and everything was happening the way he wanted, except he didn't ultimately completely stall the vote. If Donald Trump didn't want violence, he either one probably wouldn't have called them there on the sixth. That's obviously gonna be a huge red flag. Two, as soon as it got violent, he would have made calls to the National Guard to figure out like, hey, what's going on? Can I get people down there? Three, when multiple people were going into his office to ask him, hey, can you please tweet to get these people to fuck off the stop? He would have done it immediately instead of waiting until after actually that was dead, instead of, instead of waiting for hours of violence to on. And four, he would have said right at the very beginning, at like the very second anybody complained about anything, he would have reminded people to like, hey, like either leave, don't go in, don't do this particular thing, stop this now, go home, again, waiting and capitalizing on the violence by making phone calls to people. Remember when McCarthy called him, Donald Trump said, these people are a hell of a lot more mad than you are about this. Like this is a man who's taking advantage of the violence every step of the way. You can't possibly look at this guy and think, man, he really wanted them to be peaceful. When he's taking advantage of the violence the whole time, doing nothing to stop it. What is easily within his power to do so? So since you say then that, you know, he, he essentially all but calls for the insurrection by, by you know, choosing his words carefully or you know, however you want to say it, that my, my kind of question to that would be, how could someone in his position want to peacefully protest the, the results of the election without you then saying it was an insurrection, being that it was the people at the site who ended up being violent, not, not because he called for it, it just turned into that. So how could Trump have otherwise called for a peaceful protest without you saying it was an insurrection? Well, one is sending them to the place where the vote was being certified is already a huge red flag. Number one. Number two is you spent really months um, getting all these people to believe that the election was stolen with no evidence. Number three is you've used multiple parts of your government to engage in lies over and over again about there being evidence of voter fraud, which there wasn't, and you knowingly lied about all these things. Um, and four, there's probably never an appropriate way to protest the certification of the vote. Because at that point, you're not protesting like voter fraud. You're not protesting like a court's decision. You're, you're literally protesting the certification of the election. The electors already voted on the 14th of um, December. The election itself was already held on the 3rd or 3rd of November. Like, at that point, what are you protesting? You're just protesting the, the certification of the vote, the peaceful transfer the of power. official proceeding of it, yeah. Okay. Money. All right, who's up next? And then uh, I'll go to my topic I was going to ask you guys because I just want to get uh, shift the conversation a little bit, make it more interesting. James McFarlane. James McFarlane, go ahead. And we're back. I do. Myron, I do have tonight um, that you have a hard out at 11. Oh shit, uh, Eastern Standard Time or, uh, mm, Yep, Eastern Time, yep. Oh shit, so you got 10 minutes left. Yep. Okay, no worries, man. That's fine. We'll just finish answering these questions and then we'll try to speak through as many of them as we can. All right, y'all call me while I'm taking a dump, but fuck it. Um, all right, so just to give, I, I'm gonna do a little statement <laughs> and a question. But uh, my statement is, I gotta admit, I personally, like, I fuck with both Destiny and Andrew as far as both ends of the aisle reign, like, debating wise in the YouTube sphere. I typically think Destiny mm -hmm. has more intellectual valid points, but throughout this little conversation no. y'all had, I think Andrew bodied you, and that's because of, like, I mean, that hippie statement, bro, if people are out all pro. I Andrew made. Maybe two good points the entire time. Maybe he made a semi fair point about the um about him maybe not having to have a definition. Um, and there was another thing as well. Oh, I guess maybe. No, I I don't I don't know. I just, maybe that, that's kind of it. That's kind of it. I don't think, I don't think there's anything else. I think it's the only fair point he made uh, is that he might not technically have to have a definition to do the debate. Testing. They're filling every four of your things. Dinner for your waistline. Sweet potato. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. As far as those four points are, if they're all protesting for weed, you're considering that an insurrection. It's like if that's your definition, then that an insurrection. What, like, all right, who gives a fuck about who's having weed. an insurrection? Like that shit is not as serious as you're trying to make it. If it's as simple as something like that, like. Oh, I mean, you might just maybe you don't think an insurrection is a big deal. That's fine, but people probably shouldn't be gathering to violently try to overturn laws in this country. We got a process I, I for it. We got a whole bunch of. I knew that was going to be a rebuttal, but so why are you trying to equate that with a group of people smoking weed against a weed law? Like. I'm not equating. I'm not equating. I'm not the same. Don't, don't make both of those insurrections. I never like, made both of them the same. But an insurrection is an insurrection. I can show you examples of rape that are far more atrocious than other examples of rape. That doesn't make one not rape. Okay, like any crime can be done in more severity than another crime. That doesn't make it not a crime. It doesn't make it not okay. a thing. And a bunch, of, a bunch of people smoking weed against a weed law doesn't make them trying to overthrow the government. I agree. I don't think it does. A bunch of people. But a bunch of people. Would you agree that if a bunch of people smoked weed and they all
and the one thing against the law that they were suppressing, because I was going to say this too, Andrew's argument against the suppression versus being illegally, doing illegal activities doing a riot, that was his stupid fault for his argument as well. Wait, hold on, so, to be clear, wait, Andrew didn't say they were just smoking, Andrew said they were setting forests no, on fire. No, 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 I'm not talking about that in general. I'm talking about Andrew was talking about like, oh, they're, they're, committing, they're committing crimes during their riot or whatever, and you were saying that's not, them, that's not them going against a law. Like, I'm agreeing with both of you in both of what you're saying, but... In his, in his specific argument, when he said those people are trying to smoke weed, I'm a little drunk right now too, so my words aren't as coherent. But when he's saying oh, they were phenomenal. going against smoking weed and there's a bunch of hippies getting together and smoking weed, you can't equate that to people overthrowing government and saying, no, yeah, that's an insurrection if, if that's going well. with my definition. Yeah, smoking weed wouldn't be an insurrection. A crowd of people smoking weed wouldn't be an insurrection. And even if, it, even if it covers all four of your bases that you were saying. One of them is by force or intimidation in order to like, okay. overturn a law. So they'd have to be rioting, they'd have to be causing violence in order to get people to like, So they were the doing law. that while smoking weed and they're. they're Reason was smoking weed. That, that's an insurrection. If a bunch of people showed up at Capitol Hill and they said they were going to engage in violent conduct because they're we disagree, be Hill. why does that be Capitol Hill? I mean, it doesn't necessarily. I'm just giving an example. Yeah, like it, could they showed up, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. And I'm, I'm more of your fan. I'm just sure. I'm, I mean, I, I guess it could be anywhere. They engage somewhere and they wanted to go and do a whole like they maybe be a state. I don't know. Maybe they'd be a fucking neighborhood of like anti-pot smokers or whatever. And they're like, we're going to go here. And we're going to start rioting, burning houses down because we want to have a fucking weed loss change. It's bullshit. That these motherfuckers like took weed from us and engaged in that behavior. I say, yeah, that's an insurrection. You're, you've got an assembly of people. They're trying to use violence, and then you are trying to change the laws. Um, you know, they're affecting public. Everybody. Grace, playback speed. I could still understand some of this, <laughs> dude. I'm so used to two times speed, even for people who talk relatively fast. Sometimes I have to slow destiny down to back to 1.5 times speed but i'm honestly i'm like <laughs> is this 4x speed what's wrong with you no destiny just talks fast um i'm not like i'm i i can't stand one time speed anymore i i perma fucked my brain i um earlier earlier while i was editing i went back to some of the Piers morgan videos just to get um just to do the chapters so I can line up the, the chapters. Zoomers have a tension span challenge. Yeah. I'm literally watching the, the 2x speed video while playing a video game in the background. Yeah. Um, but like, I, it was on one time speed and I actually thought I was on like 0.5. It's act, it's, 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 it, it, it's so miserably slow. I, Destiny is the only one that sometimes causes problems. Sometimes when Destiny says something, it's hard to understand what he says on two times speed because sometimes he talks fast, but that's it. Like, yeah, that's an insurrection. You're insurrecting the government. That's not the process by which we change laws. Oh, we do agree that insurrection is not that like, serious I, in that case. I understood all no, that. No, I think insurrection is incredibly serious. You don't want people thinking that they can get laws changed in the country by doing violent riots. That's horrible. So you don't think the definition of that should be changed or the words should be changed for an overthrowing of the government based off of your definition? What, my, what you you're doing, I, I understand maybe. Many boundaries. Yeah, no, I, no. If you've got a bunch of people, even if they smoke weed, if they're committing acts of violence as a, as a big group in order to pressure people to change laws, no, I don't think that's like a not serious thing. I think it's a really serious, a serious thing. Do you think a bunch of people gathering together smoking weed, the police come to try to control that situation, they start protesting against it as a part of groupthink, like this is common psychology, like it takes one person to go against police for a bunch of people to do that, you think those people are equivalent to people trying oh, to overthrow the government? No, no, I don't think so. No, but I don't know how we even count as an insurrection by that. There's just a bunch of people that got together they're smoking weed or whatever, and they're bringing a riot? No, I don't think that would necessarily be an insurrection. But they, made it hard to they got together to against that law against weed, they've gotten violent or threatening, the way you said, like it's crossing every... every or Listen, here, okay, hold on. You know, here's this is the argument. Also, and if any other caller wants to say this, I'm going to flip this on them. If somebody wants to give a different positive definition, then fine, go for it. But like, I'm not going to sit here and play through every single of like the most absurd hypotheses you can give me. If you want to argue with me, you're arguing against the historical and judicial record in the United States. If you want to give another definition of insurrection, that's fine. But it can't just be what if two people go into the forest and they say the government and they kick a federally owned tree as hard as possible in order to like, it's yeah. I mean, we can probably find definitions around the edges. That are like, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess technically this would be an insurrection, but I'm not going to. Yeah, if you want to give an alternate positive definition for it, then we can critique that one. But I mean, this is the one that exists in the historical record. Like that's yeah. That's my main point was you could technically say a bunch of things was an insurrection. So let's not let's not like if that's the case, then an insurrection, the word insurrection is not that serious. It's, it's very serious just because there's a need for this. I don't know even if, like, let's say Destiny somehow accepted that, like, all these things were insurrections, he already, there could obviously be insurrections that are more serious than the other ones. One, if you're accepting the definition of insurrection, then, like, he shouldn't be, Trump shouldn't be allowed to run regardless, that's how our, our constitution works. And, and two, he's already admitted, like, there's more serious versions of insurrection, just like there's more serious versions of Every, of every kind, there are worse murders, there are worse rapes, like, <laughs> they're all bad, but like, this was a pretty, pretty, pretty bad insurrection, <laughs> right? Like, may not have been the worst it could have been, it didn't, it didn't succeed, but I mean, Ashley Babbitt was shot, um, the certifica certification of the vote was delayed by like three hours, yeah. Doesn't mean you say well, I think doesn't exist. It's not very serious. That's that's yeah. That's just not true. We can, we can imagine a ton of crimes that are very serious and not serious at the same crime. You could say one thing's more serious than another, being the same thing. But yeah, so I can say there are some interactions that are probably really bad, and historically, there are some interactions that probably weren't that bad, right? Like I think that whiskey rebellions were like really fucking tax stamps. I think the biggest deal was it was a big one. It had to do with, like the first time the national uh, like army had mobilized or anything. Like that probably wasn't that big of a deal. Every insurrection is the worst type of insurrection. I think this particular insurrection was really bad, but we can't even agree on what the definition of insurrection is. And the reason why is because Andrew knows because any definition of insurrection is either going to exclude everything from <laughs> the insurrection or will easily include January sixth. Not as burning. Uh, not as burning. All right. Was there somebody else next? This is, um, yeah, I got, you gotta go. Yeah, I do. I do have to go. Uh, but I did want to thank uh, Destiny for having this debate with me. It was a lot of fun. Um, and thank you again to Fresh and Fit for hosting. My name is Andrew Wilson, the host of The Crucible's fastest growing debate channel on YouTube. You can find our back catalog at thecrucible.video. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Sorry, I only had three hours allocated to this. We kind of went a little over. But and if your people want to continue to watch the stream, uh, they can come on over to the Fresh and Fit. Are you on YouTube right now? We're live back on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to set up a raid so that they can come on over, okay? If you're going to do an after show or something. We're on YouTube. Do you know
Oh, wait. <laughs>